Uh, welcome to the special magistrate hearing for March 28th. Please stand and raise your right hand if you wish to speak. Do you swear and affirm to speak the truth at today's hearing? Yes. Thank you. Silence all electronic devices. Thank you. Good morning. Our first case, page eight. Inspector Janie Deluzma, case number CE2310-0600, case address 6351 Northeast 20th Way, owner Eloy E. Jane Jr. and Susan Francis, posted at property 3224, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. Good morning, uh, Code Inspector Thulsma with the City of Fort Lauderdale, presenting case number CE2310600, property address 6351 Northeast 20th Avenue, uh, 20th Way, I'm sorry. This property was initially inspected um, on September 23rd, and the following violations uh, were observed. Uh, violation 9-308 is non-complied. There's debris, trash, or another element which is not permanent on the roof. The roof overhangs, fascia boards, and soffits are discolored, stained, and or dirty. Violation 9-304B is not in compliance, and the asphalt driveway in front of this property is not well graded. A pre-hearing inspection was conducted on March 23rd, 2024, and the following violations is, uh, still remains as depicted in the photos. At this time, the city is requesting 63 days to comply. I think that's it. 63 days to comply or a fine of $50 per day per violation thereafter to be imposed. Good morning. Please state your name. I'm Susan. Can you turn on your mic? Push, push, push the button in front of you. There you go. Hi. Um, my name is Susan. The last name is Haying and I live at 6351 Northeast 20th Way, I'm and sorry. I request an extension. I have the estimates for the re-roof. We're re-roofing, and we're putting a new driveway. Okay. Um, well, the city is requesting six, uh, 60 days, so 63 days to get into compliance. Will you be in compliance by then? We should be able to get the permit, whatever the time, the city of Fort Lauderdale. We have six companies that we have to decide which one we're going to go with. Okay. Did you and want once we do the roof, then we'll do the driveway. Okay. Did you want to admit that into evidence, or did you, did you want to see that? No. I, I, just, I had just asked her to bring whatever she has to show that she's working on towards getting the uh, roof and the uh, driveway completed to okay. bring it into compliance. It? We don't have to see it. No. Okay. So I'm going to then grant a compliance date of May 30th, 2024, or find it fifty dollars a day. Thank you. Okay. Good luck. Okay. To you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Our next case, page 31, Inspector Jeffrey Lombard, case number CE2312-0705, case address 720 Northwest 22nd Road, owner Carmen Anita Shirley, posted at property 3824, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. Good morning. I'm Jeff Lombard, representing the city of Fort Lauderdale, presenting the case CE 2312-0705, address 720 Northwest 22 Road. An initial inspection was conducted on 12-28-2023. The following violations were cited. Violation 9-306, exterior building wall has not been maintained. Structural parts include fascia is in disrepair. There are areas of exterior that have outstanding stains and peeling. Violation dash nine, three, six, three com has complied. Um, Lord, landlord registration. 
free application to be submitted. Violation 9-280B, there are building parts which are degraded not to be maintained. All parts and areas subject has been disrationed shall be pro properly maintained and suitable protection from the elements. There are cracks all along the wall. The entire property have exterior damage that's concerned structural issue. Violation 18-12A has complied. There was overgrowth and trash and debris on the property and the swell has been complied. A reinspection was conducted on 1-31-2024, revealed that the property still remained the same, which resulted the case to be heard at a special magistrate hearing. A pre-inspection was conducted on March 8th, 2024. Property has still remained in violation. I have been in contact with the owner throughout the process. Today, uh, the, today the city is requesting 63 days to comply or a fine of $100 per violation, therefore after the violation. All totally, and built again as a legacy to my father and bring back health care to that community. So if, but this time, I will just work with the, the um, demolitions uh, quotes that I have been given from 60 to 80. Um, I totally agree with what is happening with this property. This is a legacy property for us, and our hope is to remain, destroy it totally and build again as a legacy to my father and bring back health care to that community. So if, with this time, I will just work with the, the um, demolitions uh, quotes that I have been given from sixty to eighty thousand dollars and just demolish it and build it anew. We still have the plans of the original architecture which they don't make them like that anymore and that will be the most cost-effective route to solve this problem. Okay well then I'm going to enter the order that the inspectors um, requested which was a compliance date of May 30, 2024 or a fine of a hundred dollars per day per each um, violation. And that date again is May 30th? Correct. Thank you. Magistrate. It will, it will be demolished. All right. Magistrate, I'm sorry, Supervisor Bass for the city of Fort Lauderdale. Um, can we make that 63 days or in an order to reappear just in the event that, the, that we're still in the process with the demo permit so we can see where we're at? in the demo process? Sure, I'm sorry, how far do you want to reach? It's, it's 63 days in order to reappear. Oh, okay. I just want to okay. add an order to reappear. Okay, so then I'll also do a, a, a notice to reappear for March 28th as well. Okay. I have, oh, did I do this again? I'm on, uh -huh. Can you repeat that date again? You said March? Uh, no, I misspoke. So you want it for May 30th, you want it for 63 days and notice to reappear, right? So it'll be May 30th, um, notice to reappear. I do that all the time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Our next case is on page 50. Inspector Dorian Cullowan, case number CE2301-0786, case address 3100 Northeast 32nd Avenue, owner Pac-Man Intracoastal LLC. This case was first heard 52523 to comply by 6523 and 72823, two suspensions noted on the agenda. Six sections <coughs> not complied at $100 per day. Fines imposed at $5,000 and fines start 32924. This is in order to reappear. Good morning, Andrew Shine uh, with Ocarina and Chakas here on behalf of the property owner and we also have Rich Haste here with the, with the property ownership as well. Hi, good morning. Senior Inspector Colloyan for the city of Fort Lauderdale. Case number is CE2301-0786. Property address is 3100 Northeast 32nd Avenue. So this property was first cited on January 28, 23 and brought before the magistrate on May 25th, 2023, July 27th, 23, 928-23, and then um, again on January 25th, which resulted in some extensions being granted because of extenuating circumstances, which the uh, attorney is going to discuss in a few minutes. Um, as of the last hearing, a 63-day extension uh, was given with a mandatory reappearance for today. And I will let the um, attorney speak on what's going on. We were here for a progress report. Good morning, Andrew Shine uh, with Locker and Chakas here on behalf of the, uh, property ownership. Uh, just to, to give a brief recap, uh, we were going to demolish this building, but the city's temporary fire station was using this building's electricity 
to power it. Um, so the city vacated end of last year, and now we're just removing the FPL connections, uh, and then that's all that's needed for demo. FPL said they'll be done in April, so we should be able to get the demo permit issued very shortly after that. So you need an extension then, because yes. I guess the, it was, today was the compliance date. Yes, yes, we, oh. we'd ask for another 63 days. I think that, that lines up with the, the hearing timeline. Okay. That we don't oppose to that, but we would also like the uh, mandatory reappearance. Okay, so I'm gonna grant a, com a new compliance date of May 30th, and an order to reappear for May 30th as well. Thank you. Perfect, thank, thank you. Yeah. Our next case, page 20, also Inspector Dorian Colowin, case number CE2302-0904, case address 201 South Fort Lauderdale Beach Boulevard, owner TRD of Fort Lauderdale LLC, posted at property 31324, post, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. Good morning again, Senior Inspector Cloyan for the City of Fort Lauderdale. Case number is CE2302904, case address 201, South Fort Lauderdale Beach Boulevard. So this property was first cited on February 24th, uh, 2023 by Officer Roca for the following violations. 47-20.20H, there are parking facilities that are not being maintained at this property and there are um, oil stains and uneven missing sections of asphalt. 9305A, there's a growth of landscape material along with an accumulation of leaves encroaching upon the public right of way. 9305B, the landscape at this property is not being maintained in a neat and well-kept appearance and there are areas of dead and missing ground cover. 47-21.16.D, there's a, a half of a dead tree and or a stump on the property that is declared a public nuisance. So as of March 26, 2024, all the violations remain as depicted in the photos for the record, and the city is requesting 28 days to comply or a fine in the amount of $100 a day for each violation thereafter. Good morning, morning. Magistrate. My name is Lauren Pleffner, law clerk with Crush Law here on behalf of the property owner. Um, so we've slowly started to get this property back to compliance. Um, Restriping did occur, landscaping. We're gonna have them go out again. Um, Inspector Colonian did um, re-inspect on the 26th, as she said, and she noted uh, some slight encroachments from the palms. Um, and we are gonna meet with the inspector on site next week with the whole team, because we have some issues with the bare covering. Uh, covering. Uh, oh, as you see, some of that asphalt is uh, showing where the grass is. Um, and what we're noticing is this is a continuing problem right along the beach, it's right after A1A. And unfortunately during spring break, we do see it gets a little bit worse. So even when we have irrigation, new grass there, um, it gets trampled. So some of, some of the landscaping has, the dead tree was removed, things like that, but we would like to speak with the, the inspector and see what the best resolution would be for some of those landscape areas and asphalting. And we talked about with the inspector some, some uh, painting on the wheel stops, things like that. So um, we would respectfully request a 28-day extension to reappear before you guys with um, no fines um, and be able to present uh, our progress as we move forward. Okay, well the city was seeking this 28 days, so I'm gonna grant the 28 sure. days, which is April 25th, 2024, or there'll be a $100 a day fine per violation. And did you want an order to reappear as well? Uh, yes, I think that would be best. Okay, Perfect. an order to reappear as well then. Awesome, thank okay. you so much, have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Take it back. Our next case, page 47, Inspector Diego Santos, case number CE2306-0085, case address 1400 Riverland Road, owner Indiana Perez. This case was first heard 102623 to comply by 113023 and 12524. One suspension from 22924 to 32824. Two sections complied at $50 per day for a total of $6,900, and the city is requesting $1,123. Good morning, Inspector. Excuse me, um, excuse Inspector. me, Diego, one, one yeah. moment. We're asking that you please silence all electronic devices. There's a cell phone that's ringing. 
Okay, Diego. Good morning, Inspector Diego Santos, represents the city of Fort Lauderdale. The case as read. Um, the case was first heard on October 26, where Special Magistrate Flynn ruled in favor of the city, uh, and the property owner was ordered to uh, correct the violations 9-2820B within 91 days, 18-4C and 9-280H1 within 35 days or $50 per violation thereafter. The case returned to Special Magistrate on January 25th, where Special Manager Cannon granted 63-day extension on violation 280B and an extension for violations 280H1 and 18-4C, they were denied. Um, violation 9-280H1 was brought into compliance on um, February 1st. Um, violation 18-4C was brought into compliance on uh, February 13, and violation 9-280 was brought into compliance on February 27-24. Uh, due to the circumstances and challenges the property owner faced with her son preventing her to come into compliance sooner, so the city agreed to only impose the admin costs of, well, $1,123, and uh, the property owner is here with her daughter. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Um, so I didn't start the project because my brother was still in the property doing mayhem. Soon as I felt that it was safe, we started working on it and we still working on it to get her back home because she doesn't want to be in my house. <laughs> okay. All crowded. Wait, please state your name for the record. Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Sardis Canella. I'm her daughter. Okay. Mami diga su nombre. Liliana Perez. Don't receive an order. You'll get the information in the mail, and they'll tell you where to pay it. Okay. Mami, que va a recibir la la notificación en el correo y es mil cien dólares. ¿Cuánto cobra? One thousand one hundred twenty-three dollars. That's just the four costs. Mil cien veintiocho. Ahora. The administrative cost. Mm -hmm. They waived all the fines and they uh, reduced the fines to the administrative cost. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Good luck right. to you, ma'am. All righty. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Our next case, page three, Inspector Robert Kasarowicz, case number FC 2401-0011, case address 700 Southeast 3rd Avenue, Common, owner AIDS Healthcare Foundation, Inc., posted at property 31224, posted at 1 East Broward, 315-24. Good morning. Captain Robert Kassar, which Port Lauderdale Fire Marshal's Office here present case number FC 24010011 with a property address of 700 Southeast 3rd Avenue. Property was cited in reference to NFPA 1 13.2.3.1. The standpipe is not being maintained at least the same level of performance and protection as designed. And municipal order MO section 13-58B the fire protection system report uh, re is required to be submitted to the fire rescue department has not been submitted electronically to the compliance engine. Um, they have obtained services of a contractor to come out and do the work and uh, we do have a representative here so I'll let him go ahead and speak. We do have communications and uh, they're moving forward on it. Good morning. Hi, my name is Robert Casenza on behalf of AIDS Healthcare Foundation. So what's the progress today? And he said that you have a contract, you've been hired, what's your timeline? Um, we got the inspection the other day. I expect the proposal um, sometime today as far as the repairs. So the 63 days should be fine. Okay, and what's the daily fine you guys are seeking? Uh, we're seeking 63 days or $100 a day thereafter. Okay, so order will be your compliance will be May 30, 2024, $100 a day per violation. All right, thank, thank you. you. Our next case, page 23, Inspector Guy Siderman, case number CE 23010869, case address 1621 Northwest 7th Place, owner Herbert Davis, posted at property 31424, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. Are all 
bottom five. Inspector Guy Soderman, the City of Fort Lauderdale, presenting case CE2301869, address 1621, Northwest, 7th place. I inspected the property on January 31st, 2023, and cited the following violations. <clears throat> Violation 1812A, there is an overgrowth, trash, rubbish, and litter and debris on the property and or its swell. This is a reoccurring violation of previous case number CE1908-1795. This case will be presented to the magistrate for a finding of fact due to the reoccurring nature of violation, regardless of the compliance is met prior to hearing. Violation 9 tag 305 b the landscape of this property and its swell is not being maintained in a neat and well-kept appearance. There are areas of dead or missing ground cover, and this is a recurring violation of previous case number CE2106024. This case will be presented to the magistrate for a finding of fact due to the reoccurring nature of the violation, regardless if compliance is met prior to the hearing. Violation 9, TAC 308B complied. Violation 18, TAC 4C complied. Violation 9, TAC 280H1 complied. Violation 9306 complied. The city is requesting a finding of fact that these violations existed. Please state your name. Good morning. I'm um, Herbert Davis. Um, okay. Okay. So, so ordered. It's a finding of fact. Excuse me. There's no fines being entered. The city just wants it noted that this you know, that you've had this violation. It's a recurring violation. There's no um, fines that are being imposed, but just moving forward. They want, you know, they, they want this noted so that if it keeps happening, there will be fines imposed. But right now, there are no fines being imposed. Yes. I, I guess the issue is as far as that's a corner lot, and I have no control of what the people, they throw the debris from walking the main uh, on that property. A lot of the debris, when they, when they come in to work in the morning, they see from the overnight. They see a lot of the, the debris on the swell because that's the main from sixth trunk. And I can't control them. So when I do have people maintain the property, but it overnight the beer bottles were yeah. and they see it when they come in in the morning and, and, and with the owners it's been maintained the property, but that's that's the problem I'm having. I can't control the people in the neighborhood from littering on the swells. I mean, unfortunately, you're going to have to maintain it somehow. I can't we, tell you how to do it, but, yeah, you know. We, we are. Okay. But I'm just saying by the time they get in, it's 6, 7 o'clock in the morning, six, they see what they see. Okay. And we have the people maintain it. They clean it up. But I can't stop the people. I don't know how to give me it. How do I stop them from living? I don't know. I'm, I'm, I be pick it up every day, but how do I stop them? There's not much I can, I don't know if the city wants to give a suggestion, but there's nothing I can really give you. I can't give any advice how to do that. Just know that it, you need to stay in touch with the inspector and stay on top of it. I'm just trying to avoid the fines because they're talking about finding me mm -hmm. for something that happens every day on that property. And I, and I, and I just think that's going to be unfair. I can't control the behavior of the people whether you want to believe it or not, demographics has a lot to do. I mean, I just, I suggest you reach out to the city, the inspector, maybe they can give you suggestions, but there's nothing I can really suggest other to make sure that there's enforcement. You know, if when you come in front of me, it's because there's a violation, but I can't, I, I have to determine whether or not you're in violation or not in violation. I understand. But I can't give you suggestions of how to maintain your property. Okay. Well, it's being maintained. It's just, it's, it's, it's the repetitive. They, I understand. And um, I appreciate what you guys have been doing, and uh, well, we are working together. Good. And thank you. I right, luck to you. Okay. Our next case, page 49. Inspector Robert Kasarowicz, case number FC 2306-0015, case address 17 South Fort Lauderdale Beach Boulevard, owner Thor Gallery at Beach Place, LLC, in care of Ryan, LLC, Davina Tavares, this case was first heard 831-23 to comply by 1130-23.
Two suspensions noted on the agenda. One section not complied at $250 per day. Fine start 329.24. Good morning, Captain Robert Passar, which Fort Lauderdale Fire Marshal's Office. Uh, this is a mandatory order for reappearance on case FC 23060015 for the property address 17 South Fort Lauderdale Beach Boulevard. Uh, the existing violations that they've currently been cited on uh, is for NFPA 1 13.3.1.1, the fire sprinkler system is in need of service. NFPA 1 1.7.7.2, 7 trouble alarms are shown on the fire alarm panel, and NFPA 101. 7.2.1.8.1, self-closing or automatic closing doors don't self-close and latch. This is a, a high-rise building that sits on top of an entertainment district. Um, they are aware that the fire alarm system is in need of a complete replacement. Uh, since the last hearing that we've had on this property, they have obtained a new permit for those drop doors that are the self-closing automatic doors to tie those into uh, the existing fire alarm system, which is actually being replaced. So I think the tie-in is probably going into the new system. I don't know if that new system's quite online, but they're working out those things. They're here to request some additional time. Okay, how much time? Uh, I believe they're here, they're gonna request uh, 91 days, and we're in favor of the 91 days. These are uh, items that are just going to take some time to get done and of course right now they're in the middle of spring break in an entertainment district and we're talking about a complete replacement of a fire alarm system okay and the fine I see is 250 per violation uh, however it was set previously okay I think it was already set on there okay uh, good morning Stephen Tilbrook with Ackerman law firm representing uh, the property owner we're continuing to work with Captain Kasarwich and the fire department uh, we have our property management staff here to answer any questions. We're in favor of the 91-day extension. Okay, so what are, it'll be new compliance date, it'll be June 27, 2024, or a fine of 250 a day per violation, okay? Thank you. Thank you. All right, just for the record, uh, they have advised me also that they have uh, do have filed a notice of commencement for the large areas of fire sprinkler uh, system that's gonna need to be replaced. So we do see progress and we do see movement moving forward, and this is a totally different um, property management group than what we've seen on the property previously. So we're pleased with that and the direction it's going. Do you want going. them to reappear June 27th as well? Uh, that'll be a mandatory order for reappearance okay. though in the 91 days, okay. correct. Perfect. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Our next case, page 31. Inspector Jeffrey Lombard, 31. case number CE2312-0533, case address 607 Northwest 15 Terrace, owner Gregory B. Wright and Willis B. Wright and all others, posted at property 3624, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Jeff Lombard with the City of Fort Lauderdale, presenting case number CE 23120533, address 607 Northwest 15 Terrace. An initial inspection was conducted on 1220. 2023, the following violation was cited. Violation 9-306, exterior building wall has not been maintained. Structural parts, including fascia, soffit, are in disrepair. There are areas of the exterior are have stains and missing peeling paint. Violation 9-305A has complied. Uh, the growth of landscape and material along a cleaning of leaving approach upon the public sideway. A reinspection was conducted on 1-25-24, revealing the property still remained, which resulted the case being heard to a special magistrate. A pre-hearing inspection was conducted on March 24, 2024. Property still remained in violation. I have been in, co in communication with the owner throughout the process. Today, the city is requesting 28 days to comply or a fine of $100 per day per violation. Therefore, each Violation. All fo all photos have been submitted as a record for evidence. It's the end of my testimony. 
Good morning. Please state your name. Uh, Gregory Wright. Okay. So the city is seeking 28 days for compliance. Will be April 25th, 2024, or a $500 a day. Okay. Uh, can I get 45 days? I'm I'm a one man band here, coming out of retirement, and I'm doing all this work myself to comply. Yeah, the city's remaining uh, 28 days, sir. Very good. He's the city seeking. Forty-five. Okay, forty-five days is fine. What what is the forty-five days? Do we know on the calendar? Is forty-five days on the calendar? No. No, it's not listed to me. Okay, you'll have forty-five days to comply, or it'll be five hundred dollars a day. Okay, okay, thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Five hundred dollars a day. I don't know what Thanks, forty-five Jeff. days is. Your magistrate, sorry, uh, good morning, over here. Look On up. the calendar, we don't have the 45, it's either 28 or 63. Right, but we can do, we could do an order to reappear if we want in 63 days, but 45 oh, okay. days is fine. Okay. Are you guys seeking an order to reappear? No, but if it's gonna, if you're gonna do the 45, then I would suggest that, yes. Suggest an order to reappear? Did, did you say you were doing the reappear? No, unless you guys are seeking it, I mean. Oh, no. Yeah, so let's just do 45 days then. Okay. I just don't know what, on my, uh, I just don't know what the 45 days is. We have to just count the days. <laughs> but yeah. Okay. Good luck, sir. Hey, thank you. Our next case, page 12. Inspector Diego Santos. Case number CE2310310. Case address 1470 Southwest 21st Terrace. Owner Ryan Knight. Posted at property 31324, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. Good morning, Inspector Diego Santos representing the city of Lauderdale. Case number CE 2310310, address as read. I conducted the initial investigation on um, October 17, 2023, and the follow violations were observed. 4734B1 was complied. 9-304B, there are vehicles and trailers parked on the grass lawn area. There was, there was a commercial um, pump trunk and an air boat parked on the grass. 18-1, there are uh, items being stored outside of the property, including but not limited to a boat buoy, water heater, air boat, metal cranes, and other miscellaneous items that are creating a public nuisance. It's being maintained in a such manner that the property is or may be reasonably become infested or um, um, by rodents, vermin, wild animals, and may be furnished and breeding place for mosquitoes and trust in and endanger the public health, safety, and welfare, and may um, affect and impair the economic welfare of other properties. Violation 9-305B, the landscape of the property is not being maintained in a neat, well-kept appearance. So there are areas of dead and missing ground cover in the front of the property and in the backyard. 9-306, the exterior building walls has not been maintained. There are areas of the exterior that have stains and missing peeling paint. 9-280H1 was complied. Violation 47192HHII2, there are two portable storage units placed in the rear of the property without a permit, which actually is, there are two shipping containers. Um, the city is requesting the following. 10 days to comply violations, 9-304B and violations 18-1 or $50 per day per violation thereafter and 28 days to comply violations, 9-305B, 9-306 and 4719-2HHII2 or $50 per day per violation thereafter. Good morning, please state your name. Ryan Knight. Okay. Anything you want to say? Uh, I'd like to request a 63 days to comply with everything. Okay, this has been going on now though for four months now. 
five months? Is there a reason why you can't get in compliance within 28 days? This is um, well, some of the violations, I have an open building permit for renovations I've done. The, the, for the violation of the disrepair to the outside of the building, um, I just recently had the, the house restuccoed. It, that's primer, and the splotches of paint are actually color samples. Um, I have a contractor lined up to paint the house. And as far as the landscaping goes, the yard's been dug up several times for plumbing because I've had uh, a garage addition and kitchen addition put on. Okay, well. The stuff in the backyard, I understand. Yeah. So but the I'm, violations for the outside of the structure. The, the only one I'm inclined to give you additional time to comply will be the painting of the walls. But as far as the 9-304B, I'm going to agree with the city. It will be 10 days to compliance, or it will be a $50 a day fine, which will be April 7th. Which violation is that? I'm sorry. It will be the first, it, their violation 9-304B, which is our vehicles, trailers parked on the grass, lawn area, there's commercial pump trunk and airboat parked on the grass. Okay. Violation 18-1 as well will be 10 days to comply, which is April 7th or $50 a day. Uh, that's those are the items being stored outside of the property, included but not limited to the boy, boy water heater, everything that was stated by the inspector. Violation 9-305B, I'm going to agree that it'll be 28 days, which will be April 25th, 2024, $50 a day. And that has to do with the landscape of the property not being maintained. And then violation 9-306B, which is exterior painting. I'm going to give you the 63 days on that one, which is May 30th, 2024, or a fine of $50 a day. And violation 47-19, I'm gonna agree with the city, that's 28 days, which is April 25th, or a fine of $50 a day. Are you guys seeking an order to reappear as well, or no? Um, I think for this situation, we'd like to do an order for reappear. Okay, so we'll do a order to reappear on April 25th as well. Good luck Thank to you, sir. Thank you. You're welcome. Our next case, page 22, Inspector Guy Siderman, case number CE2311029, case address 638 Northwest 22nd Road, owner Natasha Florial and Jackson Pierre, posted at property 31424, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. 22. These were not great here. Bovary, <laughs> uh, do you swear to translate truthfully from Creole to English and English to Creole? I do. Thank you. Inspector Guy Siderman for the City of Fort Lauderdale. Presenting case number CE2310239, address 638 Northwest 22nd Road. I inspected the property on November 9th, 2023 and cited the following violations. Violation 9 TAC 280B, <clears throat> comply. Violation 9305B, <clears throat> the landscape of this property is not being maintained in a neat and well-kept appearance. There are areas of dead or missing ground cover. Violation 1812A, there are overgrowth, trash, rubbish, and debris on the property and or its swell. Violation 9, TAC 280H1, the fence in this property is in disrepair and is not being maintained as required as a broken or disconnected parts. A pre-hearing inspection was conducted on March 27, 2024, and violations remain as per photos. At this time, the city is requesting 28 days for fines of $50 per day thereafter. Inspector, could you explain what this inspector just said briefly, if you don't mind? Sure. Um, you just want to say that Zebla Mori, to the other side, Zebla Mori, pas gen Zeb, so suppose they met Zebla. Ensuite, you just want to say that um, 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 Getla, or suppose they replace it because they crazy, so that they will fix it, will arrange Getla. Uh, anything about the gravel? Thank you. Nothing on the gravel. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, um, so suppose they couple the blanc, or suppose they range um, barrier, or suppose they met the zeb cote qui bag in zebio. Ah, what's, what's the uh, dollar amount? Okay, so your ball 28 jours avec 50 dollars par jour pour qu'à range barrier qui besoin de range. Uh, she's asking if she can get a little bit more time. Can she have her name? Can you tell her to state oh, her yeah. name, please? Zino. Zino, my mic. Natasha Floyal. And how much time is she seeking? She said, can she get about 63 days? I mean, these violations are from September. They're, they've been going on now for like five months, six months. Um, je l'ai dit comme ça que bah ça aucun là depuis six mois, ce so, yoba vle bon soixante trois jours ce so, parce que je dis là depuis six mois ou pas je me fais rien. Okay, she's saying basically that um, for the fence, she's already went to the city and requested uh, a permit. Um, it's in process, and then she'd also need to finalize with the person that's fixing the fence for her. Okay, uh, I don't have any objection with giving her more time as to the fence, but as far as the overgrowth of trash and the property, the landscape not being maintained, it needs to be done by April 25th. Well, it'll be a fine of $50 a day, and as far as the fence, I'll give her until May 30th, 2024. Roger. Well, Lizzie, we have a problem with the time to the barrier, but we have a the zeb, so we have until April 2025, I mean, 25 April, to arrange it. But for the zeb, we have a I mean, for the barrier, we have a little bit okay? Uh, she's saying basically for, for the front of the property, she would want to um, put um, cement on the front of the property, and then she stated that what she needs a permit to, to get that. I'm translating for her. What does she need? What does she want to do? Oh, I, I have the city address that I can't answer that. Bovary, Supervisor Brown, can you please tell her that whatever changes she decides to make to the, with the property, that she reaches out to the city so she can ensure that it's permitted because there are landscaping requirements that she must meet so she can't just get rid of all of her grass. Copy. Lady, let's say that if there's any change that we're going to do, we suppose that we're going to permit it. So, pour qu'à garder, est-ce que qu'à approuver le pour? So, ou suppose pour un permis pour faire changement ça? She said okay. All right. Good luck to you. Good luck. Thank you. Our next case, page forty-four. Inspector Janie Deluzma, case number CE2308-1091, case address 3070 Northeast 43rd Street, owner Omar M. Rashid. This case was first heard at 125-24 to comply by 229-24. One section complied at $100 per day, $2,700 accrued. The city is requesting the full amount. Morning. Good morning, Inspector Thelusma with the City of Fort Lauderdale, presenting case number CE2308191, property address 3070 Northeast 43rd Street. This case was first heard on January 25th, 2024, where magistrate found for the city uh, for violations 47-21.15A, a tree live oak has been removed without permit, is now in compliance, and at this time the city is asking for full imposition of fine. Uh, we're asking for the full imposition of um, a fine. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. 
Good morning, Erica DeSanti here as the attorney for the property owner, Omar Rashid. Um, Mr. Rashid um, did make a, a really good attempt to try to get the permit pulled. He did do a submission on 2-7. Um, he had a couple of failed attempts. After those failed attempts, he did contact my office to assist him in opening up the permit, which we were able to get taken care of with the help of, of your team. And he's asking for um, a lien reduction. Okay, so you can apply for the amnesty program then. Um, I'm gonna impose the $2,700, but then he can make an application to the amnesty program. I'm sorry? I'm gonna impose the $2,700, but then you can make a request for the amnesty program for a reduction. Okay, thank you. You're thank welcome. You. Thank you. Our next case, page 46. Oh, Inspector Bovary Exantis. Case number CE 23060733, case address 1343 Northwest 13th Avenue, owner Jeffrey Taylor. This case was first heard 92823 to comply by 102623 and 113023. One suspension from 22924 to 32824. Four sections not complied at $25 per day, $9,975 was accrued. The city is requesting the full amount and the fines continue to accrue. This is in order to reappear. Good morning, Your Honor. Officer Exentis, on behalf of City of Fort Lauderdale, Community Enhancement. Case number CE 2306-0733, property address 1343 Northwest 13th Ave. This case was first heard on September 28, 2023, and the magistrate ruled in favor of the city and property owner was ordered 28 days to correct violation 18-4C and 63 days to correct all other violations. The case reappeared before the magistrate on February 29, 2024, and the property owner was granted an extension of 28 days and in order to reappear at this time, property remains in violation. Um, this is an order to reappear, so I would let I, w I will let the property owner speak at this time. Good morning. Um, Please state your name. Jeffrey Taylor. Okay. Good morning. Um, as stated before, um, mom is ill. I just got custody of the house. Um, she's continued to be ill. Actually, she, last time I was here, I was getting out of rehab, and currently she's in the hospital now. Um, she did the best she could. I just got custody of the house. The house is in disarray. So, Pace is on board. The AC's been replaced. Um, I'm in the process of redoing the house. I don't know what you guys want. I'm just trying to get my mom's house in order and take care of my mom. That's what I said from the beginning. It's causing a lot of stress on her. What do you want? I need time to fix something that she's had for 50 years and did the best she could. What do you want? Well, they, they want compliance, so how much time And I you... want to redo the house. That's what I said from the beginning. Let me take care of my mother's house and her. Okay. What, what more can I do? How much time are you seeking, sir? I was here 28 days ago. Mom was getting out of rehab. She's back in the hospital. What do you want from me? <laughs> what do you, my mom is dying. Do you understand what I'm saying? I can't take care of a house. I'm doing the best. Just don't go. I'm doing stuff to the house. You want me to leave my mother and go fix a freaking house that she's demolished? What do you want? Okay. I'm doing the house. 28 days, 90 days. Two weeks, I'm doing what I can. We understand. I mean, the city's just seeking compliance. Unfortunately, okay. we'll, we'll try yeah. to work with Excuse you. Excuse me. Ma'am, the Hi. lady has, is 80 years old. She did the best she could. Pace is on board. Pace is pulling, doing the roof. They're doing the windows. I put a new AC in so she can move back in the house. I'm doing what I can. What do you want? Um, you say, I said 28 days last time you'll see some improvement. There is improvement. Now what do you want? I'm going to redo the house. I can't put sod because the tree needs to be removed because it's killing the sod. 
You want me to pass the, the driveway, and the driveway's okay. got to get redone. Sir, I'll, I'll try to help since nobody from code wants to jump in. No, um, I, was, I okay. was waiting for him to jump Oh, well, he's going to keep saying the same thing, so. Uh, good morning, Katrina Johnson, code compliance manager. What we'll do is we'll give you 91 days in the order to reappear, and I... I definitely understand and I empathize with you. What's most important though is that we see progress on the property and I do understand where you are. If you reach out to your code officer, if you need assistance, I know there are programs yeah. out there and you've applied for them. Let me get somebody else. This guy is not, not understanding what I'm going through. But sir, are you well, able to move the derelict vehicle that's been there I'm, I'm for gonna hundreds move the of days? Now. I'm going to, like I said, life happens. No, understand. We all okay. understand that, but so that's something that should be easy to do, or someone can help you move the derelict vehicle, and that part could be complied. It's been there for six months. That's, you know, what I'm saying that doesn't take a lot. Some of these, un understandably, would take some work about landscaping and and exterior building walls and such. That's going to take some physical work by somebody. Okay. But yeah, moving I a car you're an attorney. should. Let, let me just say this. Just give me 90 days, leave me alone for 91 days, whatever it is. Don't put nothing on the wall. Mom's is ill. All this stuff is stressful to her. Okay. Well, sir, we have to, we have to post, unfortunately. Um, and we, we. You don't I mean, have to do anything. Yes, no, they yes are, they we are have required. to. That's, okay, that's do so what long. you do. Give me 91 days and just, just leave me there. So we're going to grant you the 91 days. You'll have a new compliance date of June 27, 2024. Do I have to be here? Yeah, we're doing notice to reappear on June 27, Can 2024. And I respectfully decline to be here. This is stressful. And for me as a grown man to come here and tell you that I'm going to do something I told you from the beginning. I'm going to take care of my mother in her house. Well, by, by you, put it this way, by you coming, it gives you, it, it allows you the opportunity to request additional time. The last time I, I was here, I said, let me communicate with the code enforcement guy that process has been going being done. He don't want to hear that. So why do I come, keep coming here if I can't communicate to him that things are being done? Okay, the reason why you come is because you have a compliance date and if you don't, if you're not in compliance by a certain date, the fines begin to run. For, by you coming here, it gives you an opportunity to ask for an extension of time. If you don't want an extension of time, then, you're, then June 27th, the fines will start to run if you're not in compliance. But that's why there's a notice to reappear to give you an opportunity to explain what is going on if you're not in compliance and as well to address the fines. There are fines right now that total $9,975. So hey, that was exempt from last time. I can't, I can't take care of the house and my mother and pay fines I, for you I guys. I understand, it, but it only benefits you by coming back in three months. That, that's what we're asking you to do. Come back in 91 so days, June 27, 2024. That fine should have been eliminated. Okay, I'm not going to deal with that now. They, they ran because you weren't in compliance timely. And, okay. I, I can't deal Wait, with that until you're in compliance. I'm not going to not take care of my mother. As you should. And I I'm not going to not take care of the house as I Take, take care of the house. You want me to put facial board when I need a roof. I told you that from the beginning. You want me to patch holes when I need a whole new driveway. You want me to put sod when the tree needs to be removed because it's killing the sod, the grass. The tree is taking, taking up the, the sewage line and everything. So I need to do everything. You want me to do that in 28 days or not? I'm, not saying, I, I'm giving you till June. I just saved you 91 days. You asked for 91 days. We're giving you 91 days. So. Okay. We extended the compliance date for 91 days. That's all we can do is give you just time to comply. Are we done? Magistrate, done. Supervisor Vance for the City of Fort Lauderdale. Um, you, we, you've made your order. Um, the code manager, Katrina, she's, she'll speak with the, she'll speak with the respondent in the back of the room. She's waiting to speak with you Thank back you. there. Thank you. Our next case, page 45. Inspector Guy Siderman. Case number CE2308614, case address 641 Northwest 14th Avenue, owner Oasis of Hope Community Development Corp, Inc. This case was first heard 12524 to comply by 2424, one section not complied at $50 per day, $2,650 accrued. The city is requesting the full amount and the fines continue to accrue. Where's the person? Page 45.
Inspector Guy Siderman, City of Fort Lauderdale, presenting case CE23080614, address 641 Northwest 14th Avenue. This case was previously heard at the 12524 hearing, and the magistrate found that the city found for the city and ordered 10 days to comply or face fines of $50 a day thereafter. The reinspection was conducted on 2824, and the violations remain and fines began to accrue. As of 32724, the violations remain as per photo depict. The city is requesting to impose full amount of fines and for fines to continue to accrue. Good morning, please state your name. Good, good morning, I'm Jacqueline Reed, representing Oasis of Hope Community Development Corporation. Okay, so the city seeking um, the full amount plus the continuation of fines well we we've been trying to work with um the code officer because we before wait we can someone turn in. off their phone it's really annoying it is annoying and i turned off the volume before i got in here and i don't know why it's going to okay so that's okay thank you sorry you go um as i stated when i came before you before the um i think it was in february uh, we are, the plans are not done for new construction, and this is a CRA project uh, with the city of Fort Lauderdale. Uh, the, you asked for the plans to be uh, presented uh, today, and as of today, the plans have not been uh, completed by the architect, and I'm going back and forth with the architect, so uh, what we tried to do was get the uh, temporary fence up, which uh, he stated we needed to get a permit to do that. So I put in for a permit to do that. The fence across there has been put up to keep people and vehicles off the property. Um, I think he said there need to be, uh, it's been clean, but he said there needs to be a permit for the fence and that's what we're doing. Um, I think there needs to be sod. Uh, I don't wanna put sod on there because it is gonna be construct constructed uh, with a, a new construction house for affordable housing, but I'm doing what I can to, in order to, to keep the fines from building up so how much time do you need um well to get that permit um i think that will get us the uh temporary fence across there and that will keep everybody off and if i have to just go ahead and lay the side i'll just go ahead and lay the side i'm not gonna continue to come back and yeah it'd be cheaper to do that than exactly Okay, so how much time do you need? Um, to get the permit, I think it's, I'm not sure how long it's gonna take to get the permit, but um, I guess another 45 days is, is fine, I guess. <laughs> it shouldn't take that long to get a temporary, event, a temporary permit, and, and, and we'll just redo it the way that the city said to do it. How much time is reasonable to get a, a, a permit for a fence? Sorry, Supervisor Bass for the City of Fort Lauderdale. Usually when it gets, um, when we're asking for um, additional time for permits, we'll give like 30 days because it doesn't take that long for the permit process to go through. So we usually allow additional 30 days. So based on what we have here, we have, we'll, we'll go 63 to make it like, make sure that everything is completed in that timely manner. Um, but she should be able to get it completed within a 30 day time frame. Okay, so I'm gonna grant till May 30, 2024, additional time to comply, okay? Or okay. it'll be a fine of $50 a day. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Magistrate, are you ordering a stay of fines? Yes. Okay. So what would be the fines? It would be $50 a day if you do not come into compliance as of May 30, 2024, but you do have past fines of $2,650 that have accrued. Okay. Okay. 
she has an understanding that it, this, that this is a Massey. You understand that this is a Massey, right, for the imposition of fines? I can't, I can't. You understand that this was a Massey for the imposition of fines, right? That the fines were already running, but the magistrate is staying the fines until you come into compliance. Okay. Once you come into compliance, then you can come, you can reach out to our department to address the fines that have accrued, okay? Okay, all right, thank you. Our next case, page 10. Inspector Edward Eason, case number CE2307-0974, case address 1011 Southwest 8th Street, owner Ryan Resnicek, posted at property 3624. Okay, we'll move to the next one. Okay, we'll come back to that one. Our next case, page three, Inspector Robert Kasarowicz, case number FC 2401-0009, case address 2900 East Oakland Park Boulevard, owner LAI Inc., posted at property 313-24, posted at 1 East Broward 315-24. Good morning. Captain Robert Kassarwich, Fort Lauderdale Fire Marshal's Office, here to present case FC 24010009 with a property address of 2900 East Oakland Park Boulevard. Property was first inspected with an annual inspection on 6 2 of 2023 and was cited for Municipal Order Section 13.58B, which is complied. Violation NFPA 1. 13.2.3.1, the standpipe system is not being maintained and at least the same level of performance or protection is designed. And NFPA 101 7.2.1.6.2, which is also complied. So we're only dealing with one violation currently uh, on this case. And we do have a representative here. I believe he's gonna uh, advise the- Good morning. That, Good morning. Yeah. That, that, they're moving forward with uh, a contractor that they are looking to obtain. I don't believe they have a signed contract with them yet. What's the city seeking? I'm sorry? What is the city seeking? Um, at this point, 63 days with a mandatory order for reappearance because I'm not sure if the permitting process, getting the contract signed and bringing the property into full compliance will happen within that time frame. But I want to keep it a little short just to keep them motivated uh, only because the area where they have to dig up to replace this underground standpipe system over there, it does affect the egress of one of the stairs, which is seen in the photographs. And what's the daily fine you're seeking? And we'll $100 a day thereafter. Okay. Craig Aiken on behalf of the respondent. We agree to that. Okay, so so orders. You have a compliance date of May 30, 2024, or a fine of $100 a day and an order to reappear. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next case, page 16. Inspector Manuel Garcia. Case number CE 2401-0120. Case address 427. West Sunrise Boulevard, Owner City Flats, LLC. Posted at property 315-24, posted at 1 East Broward, Uh, good morning, Your Honor. For the record, Officer Garcia presenting case CE 2401-0120 in reference to the property 427 West Sunrise Boulevard. Uh, proactive inspection was performed at this property on January 4th, 2024 and resulted in the findings of the following violations. 18-12A, there's trash, rubbish, and debris on this property and the swell. This is a repeat violation of case CE 21090523 and fines will begin to accrue immediately and scheduled for magistrate hearing whether in compliance or not. At this time, this violation is in compliance. 47-20.20H has complied. 47-19.4.D.1 has complied. 
47-19.4.B.1. There's a three-yard dumpster that is not properly stored at this B1 zone property. The dumpster was observed exposed and stored outside in the parking lot of the property and not in a dumpster enclosure as required by section 47-19.4.D.1. This is a repeat violation of case CE2109-0523 and fines will begin to accrue immediately and scheduled for a magistrate hearing whether in compliance or not. Please note that this violation is also in compliance at this time. 9-306 has complied, 47-22.9 has complied. Reinspection was performed on March 21st, 2024, found that the property has complied with all the requirements issued by the city. Please refer, please refer to the photo submitted as evidence for finding a violation and post compliance. At this time, the city is requesting the following fines to be imposed for the repeat violation stated. On count one, 18-12A, in violation for a total of five days at $100 per day to the sum of $500. Those days include January 4th, January 5th, January 12th, January 17th, and February 7th. On count four, section 47-19.4.D.1, this, this violation was in violation for a total of eight days at $100 per day, bringing the sum to $800, to a total of the overall fines to $1,300. So the city's seeking $1,300? Yes. Okay. Good morning, please state your name. Good morning, my name is Glenn, I'm one of the property managers for the um, city flats. So this is a uh, commercial property, as you can see, and we have a five-year lease tenant um, that is who's, per their lease, is responsible for everything, including trash and all the city violations. Uh, we, weren't, we weren't aware of the violation until it was notified by the city, but everything has been complied. I've been working diligently with the inspector. So um, this is our tenant that's actually um, of that property. Does he want to add something? You Please state your name for the record. Mm, yes. Okay, why don't you come to the mic, sir? Hi, my name is Tanvir Hassan Chaudhary. I am the tenant over there. So actually, uh, the property in exterior side, we already fixed that in time, but the property has all the trash and debris problem. It comes from the homeless people in that area. So every night we close the store and we cl clean the outside, the parking lot, everything. But whenever we come in the morning time, we see all the debris scattered in the whole property. Because of this property, there's homeless people walking around on the property whole night. And they throw all the beer cans, the pack of those, like McDonald's packers, uh, from the KFC, from those things. They crash in our places. We don't sell all those things over there, but we always found those trashes over there. Okay. Well, I, I understand as, as relates to the 18-12A that there's trash and rubbish and debris on the property as well. You're saying that's from the homeless people, correct? It's homeless people. But they're saying that your dumpster is not being maintained properly. Uh, dump, uh, dumpster, we already changed it. There is a big dumpster before, so uh, they put a new dumpster over there, and the dumpster always take up two days in the week. So now there's no way, there's nothing about that. Okay. All right, I'm gonna reduce the fines to um, $1,000, okay? They, the city was seeking 1,300, I'm gonna reduce them to $1,000. Okay. Can you reduce a little bit more, please? This is like, a, my business is not going to that much. I bought the business during the COVID, and after the, during the COVID, I didn't make any profit over there. I just paying my rent, and in this case, I cannot pay my rent in on time too. Okay, so you, I have to you don't pay. own the building, you just, are you a tenant in the building? Yeah, I'm just a tenant of the building. Okay, I'll reduce it to $650, okay? Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Their next case is on page 19. Inspector Manuel Garcia, case number CE 24010648, case address 1428 Northeast 2nd Avenue. Owner Max House LLC, posted at property 31524, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. Your Honor, for the record, Officer Garcia with the City of Fort Lauderdale presenting case CE 24010648. This is in reference to the property 1428 Northeast 2nd Avenue. A proactive inspection was performed at this property on January 18, 2024, and resulted in the findings of the following violations. 
47-20.20H has complied. 9-305B, the landscape at this property is not being maintained in a neat and well-kept appearance. There are areas of dead and missing ground cover. This is a repeat violation as per case CE21090803 and CE2308058. Fines will accrue from the date of the violation was observed until it's brought into compliance. Uh, this violation is now in compliance. Uh, 9-280, parentheses H, parentheses 1. The wood fence at this property is in disrepair and is not being maintained as required. There are areas of the wood fence that have broken slots. This is a repeat violation as per case CE21090803 and CE2308058. The fines will accrue from the date of the violation was observed until it's brought into compliance. Please also note that this, that this violation has come into compliance. Section 18-4C has complied. Please refer to the photo submitted as evidence for reference. A reinspection was performed on February 8, 2024, found the property to have complied with all requirements issued by the city. Due to the repeat nature of the violations, the city is requesting the imposition of fines as follows. For section 9-305B, the violation was in, was in violate, the section, I'm sorry, was in violation for 21 days at $100 per day. And section 9-280, parentheses H, parentheses 1, it was in violation for 21 days at $100 per day, bringing the total to $4,200. Magistrate, um, I know that uh, the respondent gets a chance to respond, but just to add to what the what the um, inspector is saying prior to you making your um, ruling, just want you to know that these properties that are coming before you now are repeat violators. So the city, the city does stand firm on asking for the positions, to, the fines to be imposed that we're asking for. And I appreciate you Thanks. telling me that. Okay. Okay, Your Honor. Uh, we got this violation, like I said, on the 18th of January. Uh, can, you met just, with can you please just state your name again for the record oh. since it's a new case? Okay, Glenn Monsieur. So, yes, we got this violation on the 18th of um, January and I met with the uh, inspector at the property numerous times throughout the, um, throughout the month of January. Um, we complied on the 8th for the, um, for the fence and it was marked almost complied on the same date um, due to the city wanting more sod down and they weren't uh, you know happy with, with the most that we laid down we laid down more sod the same day and the inspector was kind enough to come out on the same day to to cl comply that uh, with that being said the two violations and questions that are marked as repeat we ask that the court to dismiss the fact that they aren't repeat violations case number ce21090803 is actually against a different property owned by a different owner that we do not manage. It's against 500 Southwest 18th Avenue, owned by Goran Drozovic. And the other case number is CE2308058 is against 712 Northwest 17th Avenue, which we do manage. It is owned by the same owner, but it's not the same property. So while, while in Washington last year for a broken fence, it's not a repeat on the property in questions. So we ask our honor, to not assess any fines as this isn't a repeat violation. Magistrate, as a repeat violation, it does not have to be the same property. As long as it's the same property owner, the city still can ask for it to be a repeat violation. We're going to recall your case. Please, please have a seat for a second, please. Thank you. Let us, Thank you. Let us review that, yeah. We're going to go back to page 10. Inspector Edward Eason. Case number CE2307-0974. Case address 1011 North Southwest 8th Street. Owner Ryan Resnicek. Posted at property 3624. Posted at 1 East Broward 315-24. Good morning, Edward Eason, City of Fort Lauderdale, Code Compliance, presenting case CE 2307-0974 for the property located at 1011 Southwest 8th Street. An inspection of the property was conducted on 8-1 of 23, and the following violations were observed. 47-34-1A1 is complied. 
9-308B, there is debris, trash, and other element which is not permanent on the roof. This is a recurring violation, case CE 20010904. 9-305B, the landscape at the property is not being maintained in a neat and well-kept appearance. There are areas of dead and missing ground cover in the front yard. 9-304B, the driveway is not being maintained in a smooth, well-graded condition. 9-306, the exterior fascia has not been maintained with areas having stains and or missing peeling paint. A pre-hearing inspection was conducted on 327 to 24 and the property remained in violation. Cities requesting 28 days or $50 per day thereafter for each violation. Good morning, please state your name. My name is Ryan Resnicek. Okay. Is there anything you want to add? That's yeah, cool. Yes, I would. Um, you know, I've, I've been a, a resident of this property and own this property for approximately 10 years, um, obviously paying all taxes. Uh, I have a company. Um, I have someone that owes in excess of $100,000 and another that owes over $200,000. I filed a lawsuit with the city of Fort Lauderdale against these companies uh, in 2020 and 2021. Obviously, the cost of these are very extensive. Um, I did start to do, the, uh, to do the pavers in the driveway. We brought in five or seven tons of sand. Um, then I needed to get a soil, like site, site drawings. I think it was a swale and a, a, a drainage plan. Just, just some other drawings that would have been, uh, taken that total from like three or four thousand for the pavers up to about ten thousand. Um, the inspector Easton was kind enough to work with me on one this about six months ago. I did remove the majority of the debris. Uh, there's a picture here. You'll see there was a screen door that blew off in the storm about a month ago. Uh, that's in this picture right there. Uh, we've since removed that. Um, I do have a hundred year old oak tree. That's there that, that obviously drops leaves. There are a lot of leaves on the roof. One of the challenges they're running into is, is that roof is leaking in four different places. To remove the roof and to replace the fascia is about $44,000. Once I complete the lawsuits, I will be able to do it, but I, I'm here to work with the city. I, I do have the ability to uh, wipe the staining from the, the fascia. Um, I can get up there with a blower and, and avoid the soft spots. Um, but the stuff like the driveway and replacing the roof, I'm not able to do at this point. Uh, we go to trial in July, end of July, and I think it's August 20th. Um, once that's done, then I'll have all the financial wherewithal to take care of all of this. Okay, so basically he's seeking 154 days because his trial is set for August and he's not gonna get funding until August, which is 154 days. So. As far as the landscaping, I think that that 28 day requirement is not a, um, a unreasonable request. You know, I, can, can you do that in 28 days, the, the landscaping The component? landscaping as far as planting new sod and irrigation. Okay, that is, and the debris, so on. The, the debris, absolutely. And you can see a couple of pictures that I took um, showing um, the, the front area where that screen door was, that was, that was uh, taken care of. The, okay. the, the leaves on the roof, yes, absolutely. Okay, so 9-308B, I'm going to uh, give a compliance date of April 25th, or there'll be a fine of $50 a day. And 9-308B is which one? That there's debris, trash, or another element which is not pre permanent. On the roof, okay. Okay. Yes. 9-305B, which is a landscape of the property is not being maintained. I'm going to give that a compliance date as well, April 25th or there'll be a uh, fine of $50 a day. And, and that is to the extent of just uh, r removing any weeds, or uh, yeah, I'm not sure what. It says there are areas of dead and missing ground cover in the front yard. Well, as you can and see in this picture, we, we, we spread the, I think it was $1,500 of sand we brought in to do the pavers. And the city of Fort Lauderdale had asked me about four months later to spread that. So we spread that across the property. Um, just obviously work with the inspector to make sure you're in compliance with that part. The driveway is not being maintained in a smooth, well-graded condition. What are you, are you redoing the driveway, or we, we want to redo the driveway, but again, that's about thirteen thousand dollars. Okay, so that the, when you're waiting until August, I will wait until August with that. Okay, so on for the for nine dash three hundred four B and nine dash three hundred six, I'm going to give you a compliance date of August 29th, which is one hundred four days. Okay. Okay. Obviously, if you run into, a, I'm going to do a notice to reappear um, on August 29th as well. That's fine. Absolutely, and then I'll okay. work with the inspector in the, in the meantime. Good luck to you. Thank you. You're Appreciate welcome. your help. Yeah. Yeah. August 29th. 
Recalling uh, the case on page 19, Inspector Manuel Garcia, case number CE 2401-0648, case address 1428 Northeast 2nd Avenue, owner Max House, LLC, posted at property 315-24, posted at 1 East Broward 315-24. Good morning, your magistrate. Um, again, Katrina Johnson, co-compliance manager for the city of Fort Lauderdale. I reviewed violations 9-305B and 9-280H, and they are both um, repeat violations based on case number CE 23080058, which although is a different property address, it's still Max House LLC as a property owner, so the city's still requesting that those fines be imposed. Okay. So ordered, I'm going to impose the fines up to $4,200 that the city was seeking. Thank you. You're Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Next case, page 43. Inspector Robert Crock, case number CE 2402-0485. Case address 1517 Northeast 17 Terrace, owner Happy Seahorse LLC. This case was cited 21824 to comply by 21824. Three sections complied, a total of $1,000. The city is requesting the full amount. Appeal deadline was 3424, and a citation appeal was received. Inspector Robert Kroc, presenting for, on behalf of the city, case number CE 24020485. I have address 1517 Northeast 17 Terrace, Happy Seahorse LLC. See, this property was first inspected on 21824 for, for loud noise, music, music, and parking that was observed. Or, or violations found were section 15-2785A. With an immediate fine of $200, there is noise emanating from this vacation rental property, which is outside the permissible limits. 15-2785A, an immediate fine of $400. There is noise, <coughs> sorry. Sorry. So it was 15-2781E. There is a chapter 15, article, article 10, vacation rental standards parking violation occurring at this property. Then there was violations 15-2785A. There's noise emanating from this vacation rental property, which is outside of the permissible limits. This is a repeat violation of case number two of CE 23070678 and will be presented to the magistrate regardless of compliance. And then violation 15-2755, responsible party failed to respond to the property in person within one hour of being notified by a vacation rental occupant, law enforcement officer, emergency personnel, or the city. This is a repeat violation of case number CE 23070678 and we presented it to the magistrate regardless of compliance. I arrived at this property at, at one minute past midnight right, uh, for a complaint about noise, noise from 25 feet of the property. property. I took a one minute video of the noise Noise, noise, and pictures of parking on on the right of way in front of in front of the vacation rental. I then informed the made it, attempted to inform the responsible party, leaving a voice message message with no response. Failure to respond and the noise violations are repeat offenses from case CE two three zero seven zero six seven eight. Does any of your video have um, sound? Yes, there should be sound on there. Yes. Is it not playing for you? No, it's going on. Oh, okay. I can play it from audio. <laughs> That's why I, I figure if they have it, they, they had a body cam, they could uh... Okay.
far away are you from that? 25 one? feet from the property line. line. <laughs> and since it's a vacation rental, all it has to be is audible noise. It does not have to be amplified. So there's yelling, they're talking. It's clearly audible from 25 feet from the property line. Okay. And would it, please state your name. Good morning. My name is Ileana Ramos. I'm the property manager for the management company. Okay. Is there anything you want to add? Um, yeah, I came here on behalf of the owner to request either a dismissal or a reduction of the fines. Um, this, on this particular night in question, and this particular property, we have a neighbor that has called several times with several of our guests. Um, and I just feel like fines are being imposed under pressure from him you know, to do something. I don't know what your video heard. I didn't hear a lot there. I also have video of the front of the home on the night in question. And outside of just people gathering, it wasn't a disturbance. We take the ordinance very seriously. It's not something that we poo-poo. We have, we manage over 20 properties. All of our guests that are incoming, we have posts notice. I meet them personally. I let them know about the noise ordinance. We have a guest that we've, you know, threatened to cancel their reservation and evict because we've had complaints. Um, so it's not something that we take lightly. Um, on this night, I do see the call log there. We don't have a record of a phone call. We don't have any messages that were received. I have spoken, you know, in the past with other officers. You know, we always answer the phone. I'm always quick to respond to them and the guests. Um, and though it may be a repeat, it obviously is not a repeat of this same reservation. Um, and so we're just asking for some leniency with regards to the fines that were imposed. Um, the house has ample parking. When we spoke with the guests after the fact, they stated that they weren't their vehicles. Obviously, it's a matter of he said, she said. This house has a driveway that spans the full width of the front of the house. You, you can, can easily- see the parking. You can see the parking. That doesn't mean that there are guest cars. I mean, it's a, it's a street full of, full of houses. And you know, there's always vehicles parked along the street there. Mm -hmm. I always inform our guests that if they are having guests that would exceed what can fit in the driveway to block our driveway versus, you know, blocking other v other houses. Um, you know, again, these are conversations that are had with every guest. I spoke with this guest afterwards. Um, unfortunately, I didn't have the opportunity to speak with them that night. Um, but yeah, we're just asking for some consideration with regards to the fines. There were several fines imposed um, this evening. I think it's, you know, about a $1,000. Um, and again, the, the parking, I don't feel is justified. The phone call, I see the call log there. So, you know, I can't argue that, although we don't have any messages. Um, and then again, though the noise ordinance is very clear, I think there is some subjective interpretation there, you know, with regards to where you're standing, what's loud, what's too loud, what's a disturbance. Um, and, you know, our guests in the video that I have, if I can share it, I don't know if you want that, but they did comply. You know, they got quiet as soon as the officer came, and from what we can tell, they also took their gathering inside. All right, I'm gonna have, I see there's a neighbor that wants to testify, so I'm gonna have, the, hello, you? You, you, why don't you have, you can come up, sir, and sp say your name for the record, and. Joe Hollingsworth, I represent my family who suffers for five years next to this party pad resort pool bar. Okay, so you were there that and evening? I hope you slept lately because I haven't. Okay, okay. And Why don't you explain what happened that night? In this night hardly matters. This is one instance in five years of agony and constant disruption. I've got pages, I've got videos, I've got all kind of stuff. I didn't know what kind of presentation I'm going to be able to make here tonight. But I'd like to talk about this Sunday. Do you have footage of Sunday night? Well, sir, we're, we're just we're only here with okay. this. Yeah, All just right. for this okay, night. Okay, this is a tragedy. There's no one in this room who would put up with one more minute of what I'm suffering behind this house. I'm, so what I would suggest every time there's a party or something. I do. You I, call I know Robert very and, well. And keep a log and, and that way. Okay. And, and bring whatever here. neighbors you want to bring because the more neighbors you have support your position. But I, I totally okay. um, emphasize and understand. Yeah. If I may reference a... Uh, police report from this past Sunday night where a bottle was launched at my living room window and I have glass in my feet right now from walking on it. I have a video in my pocket right now of one of your guests crawling onto my property and scaring the daylights out of my wife and nine-year-old daughter crawling up five feet from where they were sitting. I'm livid. I haven't slept. Okay. I'm sick of this, and you've been ignoring me. The owners ignore me. Everyone is ignoring this. The police okay. did nothing. 
Okay, I can I, only... I can't take it. Right. I have anxiety that every time I leave my work, what am I going home to? Okay, I, I, appreciate, I appreciate you telling me that. All I can do is deal with what's in front of me and based on what the, yeah. the testimony from the inspector, the yeah. urine this, testimony. This, this is nothing. This is the tip of the iceberg. Okay, well, you know what? You got to keep keep complaining and we're going to keep finding them. I do. I know. But and you I, know what? I'd I, like... I, I'm limited at what I can do. So what's okay. in front of me today is unfortunately just is, these is fines, there, so. it, Should anything happen when a person throws a bottle at my house and it's Absolutely. Well, that's when them. you called the police, I right? did. You know what they said? Mm. Get this. We can't do anything because we didn't see it happen. Do you, so I guess you have to start videotaping, have a ring I, app or something in the back of your house. Yes, I, I do. I, I just bought it two days before this happened. Okay. Because this, this is a highly emotional thing to me. This, I, I, I can't go home one more day of this. You don't respond to this. I call all hours of the night. I stand on top of the fence and scream at these people to go in at 1, 2, 3 in the morning. And you know it. You go home and look at your video. See what happened this past weekend. But this weekend is one. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. I, I think we're, we're getting. All right. You know, I think I've heard enough testimony. I appreciate your testimony. Um, this has to be stopped. Okay. How many I, times have they been written up? They have, I, I've looked online, there's pages of violations. This needs to be stopped. Okay, well, for, for today's purposes, I am going to find them the $1,000, okay? There's nothing yeah. more I can do than that. This That's has to be stopped. No one here would stand for this. None of you would stand for this. If, it, if you couldn't go home and go to sleep. Okay. Well, I, I'm only able to find what's in front of me. I don't have any jurisdiction on that, so I am going to find the thousand dollars. It seems like there's plenty. Is is there no hope of this being closed down? So, as you are aware, again, Katrina Johnson for the City of Fort Lauderdale, Code Compliance Manager. As you are aware, three violations results in a 180-day suspension. We will review the case and as well as the property. If it does meet the criteria, then yes, we will do what okay. we do for every other property. We'll bring it back before the magistrate. Absolutely. I don't know if I'm going to sleep tonight. I don't know. Well, I'm 30 feet away from this party pad just, where people just, just launch like, items Just like she me. said, if, if they have these reoccurring, they escalate, they will lose their license. It's okay? been reoccurring for five years. And we, are, we definitely understand. So again, we're going to move forward from here. If there are any violations tonight, you know that our night team is on until three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Nine five four eight two eight eight thousand. Yeah, or I know. That, I know. Vacation that, well, runs, well, we actually have a vacation rental hotline now. Okay. So if you Robert, would, I'm, I beg you, as I beg every time I call for someone to come to my street, a block away, a hundred feet away from their fence line, <laughs> and listen to what I hear. When you ride to the front of the house. You're blocked by all these buildings, and you don't hear the brunt of it. And I've had, uh, I've just had people ride by and say, you, this past weekend, Sunday morning, I woke up to a roof full of kids on lounge chairs. You got that on the video? Jumping into the pool? So, I do. again, tonight, I do. tonight when you reach out, if you have to reach out, we'll make sure that we come to your property line. Yes. Robert has heard you. I have heard you. So we're going to make sure that we yeah. do the best we can for you. I used to have contact with someone named Tristan, who used to take care of it. I don't, do you know Tristan? Okay, she used to help. She started ignoring me. The owners ignore my emails. You've ignored my calls. No one is helping me. We will make sure the we do the best we can. The police don't even respond to a bottle thrown at my family. Okay, well, today we started, at least what's in front of me. I promise you, if when the evidence is presented to me and I have a Can I show you a video of a guy five feet away from my That's well, my that's not it's not relevant. I can't do anything about no. it. You know, it would I showed person. it to the police. They, they said, well, we'd have to see it. Well, then pour, perch in my backyard and hang out. I mean, wh how is a policeman supposed to witness this? Again, I, I'm sorry. Everyone is sorry. Everyone. Again, we take the ordinance serious. I do apologize for any disturbance. We answer okay. phone calls to our company line, um, which has been updated with the city. So I want to make sure that I don't know if there's someone that I can reach out to to make sure that they have our correct people. number. Okay, sir, sir, sir. People. Sir, can you please stop yelling, sir? Sir, please stop yelling, please, please. Thank you.
Okay. I would just wanted to ask, is there someone specific that I can reach out to to make sure that you guys have the proper contact information? I did send an email that was acknowledged, but I just want to make sure that you all have our updated phone number. Please send an email to vacationrental at Fort and they okay. will make sure it's updated. I have. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, ma'am. Sir, we're ready for the next case. Thank you. Our next case, page 44. Inspector Bernstein Sainberg, case number CE 22040523, case address 1470 North Dixie Highway, owner Wisteria Court Condo Association, Inc. Yeah, this case was first heard 33023 right to comply by 52523. Several suspensions noted on the agenda. One section not complied at fifty dollars per day. Our fines start 32924. Good morning, Inspector Senior Inspector Bernstein Sandberg for the City of Falado, presenting case C E two two zero four zero five two three. Address fourteen seventy North North Dixie Highway. The following violation remain, 9-306, the exterior, the exterior building walls have not been maintained. There are areas of the exterior walls that have stains, missing and peeling paint. Pre-hearing inspection conducted on March 27th, 2024, revealed the violation remains. I would like to submit the photos onto the record. The city is requesting fines to start on March 29th at $50 per day thereafter. Dale Kleps and I'm the property manager. Um, so yeah, this has been super long um, going on. Uh, as you can see, most of the building is painted. Uh, the back side, we just finished the concrete repairs there. Talked to the project manager this morning. Um, they are gonna go ahead and start painting that. We still have doors to replace on that side as well, but um, they are gonna start the painting. Um, I'm fine with the fine starting, I, I get it. We appreciate all the time. No, no time um, to the fines to start on the 29th of March. Yes, yes Magistrate. Yes. We're, we're asking for, and Supervisor Bass for the City of Fort Lauderdale, this, we're asking for no more extensions and for the fines to continue to accrue, no more stay of fines. Once the property comes into compliance, then the property owner can come back and ask around to address the fines at that time. But we want the fines to continue to accrue. Okay, so what are... Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next case, page 28, Inspector Bovary Exantis, case number CE 24010138, case address 1450 Northwest 21st Street, numbers one through and two. Owner Marie T. Time, posted at property 3924, posted at one East Broward 31524. Good morning, Your Honor, Officer Exensis on behalf of City of Fort Lauderdale, Community Enhancement. Case number CE2401-0138, property address 1415 Northwest 21st Street. This property was first inspected on January 4th, 2024, and the following violations were observed. Violations were observed. Um, violation 9-306, the exterior building walls have not been maintained. Structural parts, including fissure and soffits, <coughs> Are in disrepair. There are areas that are there are area of the exterior building that have stained and missing peeling paint. Um, violation 9-304B. The parking lot in this is in disrepair. There are cracks, holes in the parking lot, and the blacktop is faded. Violation 18-4C is in compliance. The city is requesting 28 days to correct all violation or fine of $100 for each violation each day thereafter. Good morning, please state your name for the record. Good morning, Good morning. my name is Mary Time. You need to come up a little closer to the mic, ma'am. 
Uh, you pull it, pull it down. There you go. Okay, so do you understand what the city is seeking? I, I hope they get a quail to speak to what I understand. Well, we need an interpreter, okay. Yeah. Jenny, do you swear to translate truthfully from Creole to English and English to Creole? Yes, I do. Thank you. Okay. Um, so what was, because I wasn't really paying attention, what was the last thing that was said? Uh, Inspector Bovey, what was the last thing that was said so I could interpret? Okay, sure. Um, violation 9-306, it's the building walls that need to be painted. And violation 9-304B, it's a parking lot that needs to be repaired. Okay. So, we can do violation la su su queso. You can say on for a building la kaila. So, fuck me pentire ma kon ki kote gem No, ma ga de photo yo. Me kote pa pentire and pe yo discol kula yo pa yo pa uniform. Fuck u mete repentire li. Ou pa bezwen pentire tout kaila men repentire avec même couleur et puis faut qu'il mélange bien OK Ou comprendre ça m'abdou She said she painted the the house Oh uh, well I mean we can we there's there will be a reinspection schedule so um within that time so we can I'll be out there and if if it's painted then it will be in compliance OK, officer Bovi dit comme ça, si c'est vrai ou peinture, la pour respecter lui, pour si si il doit faire ça, et puis il va venir pour si c'est ça, et puis il va comprendre lui si tout le monde bien. One other thing I want to add is that do not just add the black top. Actually, the holes in the crack need to be fixed, not just throw the black tops on, on the driveway. OK, pour pour côté au parking machine, non Okay, so she say, she asked if you're going to give her more time to, to do it. Um, Supervisor, as for the city of Fort Lauderdale, could you, could, which violation is she asking for more time? She's make sure that we have clarity because she's saying that she painted. He was just his last inspection was on March 22nd. Is she saying that she painted after the March 22nd? And how much time is she asking for which violation? Okay, eske udu ute udu fin penti kaila right? Kila ute penti eli. Abre sa ute gita pale avamu ute penti eli deja me ipot ko te gina abre. She says she painted it last week, sometime last week. She don't have an exact date. So well, it, it could have possibly been after um, he did his inspection that she did it. But we're, we'll, the, the city will give, um, how much was originally asked for? 28 days is what it is. She's asking for additional time for the blacktop or for the paint? Because she's already did the paint, so now it's to fix the driveway. She needs additional time for the driveway? Yeah, uh, we do please don't put driveway yeah. for combien de temps ou pas ou quoi besoin? Combien venture you? See more. That's the date. She say 28 days, but if more is possible, okay. 63 days. We're, we're inclined to give 63 days. Yeah, boss, was on to ask you for fin fin pet travail for driveway. What What about the parking? Um, the the parking lot is she able to get into that to compliance? Because that as well is 28 days. Right now, she's saying that she's painted already, so oh. maybe she painted after his inspection. So, um, if it's, she has painted, then that would be in compliance when he okay. does, when he conducts the reinspection. So we're going to give sixty three days okay, for the so driveway for her to come into compliance, or fifty dollars a day thereafter for the painting of the, of the, for, the for, for, for both. If one is for white, for everything, you're just asking for everything. Okay, yeah. that's fine. So I'm going to give sixty three days. It'll be a compliance date of May 30, twenty twenty four. For the both outstanding violations, or there'll be a fine fifty dollars a day. Okay. So again, just got a May 30 May for corrigir a driveway, 
Si vous ne pouvez pas corriger l'enfant, il y a un charge de 50 dollars par jour. Mais il faut que vous fassiez l'enfant. 100 dollars. 100 dollars. Vous avez dit 100 dollars. Oh, ok, sorry for that. Ok, 100 dollars a day per violation. So, 100 per violation is what you're seeking. 100 dollars per violation each day thereafter. Ok, that's what I ordered. 100 dollars. So, I'm sorry, Supervisor Vance for the City of Fort Lauderdale. We want 50 dollars for it each violation if it's not in compliance, not 100. We're going to ask for $50, okay. okay? Okay, then I'll reduce it back to 50. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so. $50. Thank you. So $50 a day per violation with the compliance date of May 30th. Okay, do you want an order to reappear or no? No, okay. Okay, so you have about 30 days to make 63 days to make correct the work. If you don't have to correct the work in the end, il y a charge de 50 dollars par jour, donc il faut que vous faites le travail ou en vendre l'air, ok? So, May, um, what is the date that she has to comply? So, so 30 May, il faut que vous faites tout le bagage. So, make sure, si vous ne peintez pas, vous ne peintez pas. Ok? So, she said she painted the house. I was just letting her know to make sure that it's painted, parce qu'elle va venir et re-inspecter. Et elle comprend? Vous comprenez? Est-ce que vous comprenez tout le bagage? Ok, so she says she understands. That's why. Our next case, page 48, Inspector Guy Siderman, case number CE2211-0014, case address 966 Northwest 17th Avenue, owner Kathy Annette Lawson and Raymond L. Lawson. This case was first heard 92823 to comply by 10823 and 113023, one suspension from 113023 to 3824. One section complied at $25 per day, $625 accrued, fine start $329.24. This is a request for extension. Inspector Guy Siderman for the City of Fort Lauderdale presenting case CE2211014, address 966 Northwest 17th Ave. This case was previously heard at the 92823 hearing and the magistrate found for the found for the city and ordered 10 days to comply or face fines of 25 per day thereafter. Yeah. This case was then brought again before the special magistrate on 11 30 23 and was again granted an extension of 119 days. Two violations remain on the property as of 3 27 24, which are 9 TAC 304 B, the gravel in the driveway of this property was observed to be in disrepair. There are areas of gravel driveway that are not surfaced with a hard dust-like material and maintained in a smooth and well-graded condition. 9 TAC 280 H1, the wood fence of this property is in disrepair and is not being maintained as required. Areas of the wood fence were observed to be broken, missing pieces. In addition, the wood fence was observed to be leaning and missing proper support. Property owner is requesting another extension as fines for both violations would start 329-24. Good morning, please state your name. Captain Lawson. Listen, the city supposed to be fixing my house, okay? Um, Wait, ma'am, what is your name? Captain Lawson, Captain A. Green Lawson. Okay. Okay, the city supposed to be fixing my house. My house is supposed to be in October 2023. Okay, it's going to October 2024 now. All right. Um, so my, fence, my fence, I got the pieces from my fence, but they still haven't finished my roof, okay? They still got to go in the back and do my roof. I got, well, okay. I got to get the gravel, okay? Okay, there, there's two violations yeah, that you have outstanding. The you have the gravel in the driveway and, and, and the wood and, fence. So right. how much time do you need to get in compliance? You're That's asking for... The, well, I can put the pieces up there, but the city going to tear it down when they go back there to do my, my finish my roof. Okay, again, there, again, there was a compliance date of today. How much time do you need to get in compliance? That's all we're asking you. I don't you know. Is, I don't know. 
63 days, 90 some days, it's up to the city. The city to come and finish my stuff. The, the city, city got to come. They got to put a thing up there to tear my ceiling down. They got to move a thing back up there to put my ceiling down. They got to go through the fence. They got stuff to finish doing. The city still got stuff to do. I don't know when they're going to do it. But you keep saying the city is the city. The city of Fort Lauderdale, um, Avis, 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 Rachel, all them. I got a $60,000 grant. Okay. okay. Um, and I'm waiting on them to come and finish their work. Okay. So, so Good morning, Katrina Johnson, and co-compliance manager again for the city of Fort Lauderdale. She is working with our HCD department, I'm sorry, division, where they have given her funding to uh, fix these violations at her property. However, I did speak with Ms. Rachel Williams not too long ago regarding this particular property. And part of their concern is that a lot of times when their contractors are coming to do the work, there are derelict vehicles, other outdoor storage items, and so they can't, they're not going I, to move. I did all that. Oh, and that's the thing. So every time they go to do the work, they have to try to traverse different outdoor storage Challenge. items that help challenges at the property. And so I will reach out to Ms. Rachel uh, again today, and we can definitely provide her a 63 day extension to give me time to get feedback from our other division and see how we can move this along. So 63 days. Okay. Yes. All right. So I'm going to grant yes, extension okay. to. I'm going to grant the extension until May 30th for those two outstanding violations or, or the fines will restart at $25 a day, okay? A what? There, I'm going to grant the extension. There's no fines on those two violations right now. I'm going to grant the extension to uh, May 30th, 2024, or the fines of $25 a day will start. Okay, I can come back. Do you want to come back? Yeah, I want to come back. Okay, so in order to reappear on May... Okay, then I'll do an order to reappear as well. Mm -hmm. I'm finished. You're done. Speculating. <laughs> Our next case, page 47. Inspector Robert Kasarowicz, case number FC 2307-0004, case address 2196 Northeast 56th Street, owner Emall LLC. This case was first heard 1026-23 to comply by 1123-23. One suspension from 213-24 to 223-24. One section complied at $100 per day, $7,800 accrued. The city is requesting the full amount. Good morning, Captain Robert Kasarwich, Fort Lauderdale Fire Marshal's Office. Case number and property address and violations as read. Um, the respondent, I guess, requested to come back provide an explanation to uh, the hearings over here as to why it took so long for them to come into compliance. So let's hear from them. Good morning. Please state morning. your name for the record. Yes. Esteban Marchis. This is your opportunity to explain why it took so long to get in compliance. Yeah. Well, the, the last time when I was here in February 13, I, I received the, the, the notice that I need to, to put the correct um, paper in the fire extinctors. I remember you said me that I have 10 days in order to, to do it. I did it. And in February 20, uh, we sent a message with Mr. Robert. Um, I, I understand the, I received a confirmation that the, the oh, sorry, the um, violation has been um, corrected. I remember when I stayed here February 13, I explained that I didn't receive the, the note because in the records, uh, when, when in the, sorry, I don't speak in English very well, but okay. when I stay here, I, I remember explaining that I didn't receive the letter. I'm from Argentina. I live some part of my time in Argentina and some part of time here. The letter that the city sent was in a broker that my partner has the, the address. And I remember that you sent me after to correct the, the violation, I need to change the mailing address in Brower Property County. I did it, I received the confirmation in February 26, and now the address that I have, it's the, the correct one in order to be sure that all the notifications that the city sent, I, I will receive. 
I under Sir, uh, just a quick question. I think you're doing fine, but I just thought I'd ask. Do you need a translator? If you have a translator in Spanish? Yeah, of course. Okay, yeah. maybe. We're multi-talented No, 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 it's perfect. Yeah. <laughs> For me, it's I mean, better I think because... You're doing fine, but I just, you know, I thought I'd... I try to explain, but um, I don't have all the vocabulary in order to... No. Mejor en español. Okay. <laughs> Do you swear from the truthfully translate from Spanish to English, English to Spanish? Yes, I do. Thanks. Dígame, caballero, ¿en qué le puedo ayudar? Bien, a lo que yo le entiendo es que yo tengo una violación al 13 de febrero que ellos me dieron 10 días para corregirla. Yo he, la corregí. He says that he had a violation of, on February 13th and he gave him 10 days and he actually did correct it. Yo recibí un mail del, del inspector donde la corrección había sido notificada. I received an email from the inspector where he basically said that the violation was corrected. Después de eso, como había una multa que yo eh, se iba a tratar de producir y que es este, lo que me habían dicho es que como yo tenía la dirección, mi mailing address era incorrecto, yo tenía que cambiar el mailing address y tenía que presentarme acá para discutir el tema de la multa. He basically says that, um, uh, that he received the letter, but the mailing address was wrong, and he had time, or somebody asked him to have time to correct it, and basically that's why he's here today. Once he actually received notice of the violation, no because la notificación. Eh, bueno, en realidad creo que estaba pegada desde octubre, pero yo me enteré como unas semanas antes de febrero. He, he says that it was probably on the wherever posted uh, since October, but he just recently found out in February. And did he change his address with uh, BCPA? Ah, oh, okay. He would, he would like to know if the violation is actually corrected. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Yes, the violation was corrected and it was taken care of once we established uh, communications. So at this time, the city is seeking $7,800. Because you didn't respond timely. You had a compliance date of February 20, 2024. I mean, I'm sorry, you had a, a compliance date of November 23, 2023. 2023? Mm -hmm. It took you 78 days to get into compliance. It's not an excuse. When I heard about this, and basically he read something about 10 days, that I wanted to collaborate with the city and, and I could find. I would, I would like for you to consider the, the amount that it won't impact me a lot because 7,000 is a lot. What kind of building? Is this an office building? What is this? It's a three-unit apartment building. Okay, is it being, was it being occupied and collecting rent during this time? Two of them, yes. One of them, no. It's being occupied. Two of them are being occupied. Okay. Can I make a motion? Sure. Uh, seeing that we had an issue with um, getting notice to the correct address, uh, even though we did have postings that were at the property. Uh, if you would consider maybe a reduction in the fines, we would be in favor of that. Uh, in the end, we did get compliance. Uh, would like to see maybe some kind of emergency contact numbers posted at the property. Fair enough. So that uh, in the future, not just fire inspections, but or any code uh, inspections or anything else that occur on the property, there's uh, a readily available number that we can get a hold of somebody that's going to be responsible and we don't have to go through the lengthy process of uh, putting cases together and bringing them before this hearing and uh, taking up the court's time. Sure. Okay, sir, I'm going to reduce your fine to $2,500. Okay. Okay, so we, we understand. And now moving forward, please provide contact information so that if there is an emergency like this or, you know, a fire safety issue, they, they don't have to waste time trying to find you and they'll know immediately where you are. Okay. 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 Thank you. I'm sorry. And one other thing, if I could add. 
Um, have him check his fire safety account bill because it does show a past due balance and a lot of our re-inspections for our time in this hearing uh, are reflected back over on the fire safety account and not necessarily on the code case. Do I have to call the fire department? Uh, I can put him in touch with the contractor. Okay. I'm sorry, guys, can you ask him if this is a rental property? Yes. He needs to register with the mandatory landlord registration program or that's another violation. No, he's asking if uh, the landlord registration requires an inspection, and I said no. It's just a registration. Okay, yeah. okay, perfect. And it's free. Okay. Okay. Y es gratis también. Perfect. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Our next case, page 48. Inspector Janie Deluzma, case number CE2401-0375, case address 4008, Northeast 21st Avenue, owner Racine Kersing and David Ocon. This case was cited 11124 to comply by 11124, one section not complied at $450. $450 accrued. The city is requesting the full amount. Appeal deadline was 126.24, and no appeal was received. Hi, my name is David O'Connor. I'm um, one of the property owners. I'm going to have okay. him. It's okay. I'm going to have him explain the violation, and you can respond. Case number CE2401-0375. Okay, thank you. Uh, Officer Phyllis Moop. Janie Thelusma with the City of Fort Lauderdale, uh, presenting case number CE2401-0375, property address 4008 Northeast 21st Avenue. This property was initially inspected by Inspector David Sandiford on January 11th, and the following violations were observed. Uh, violations 9-304B uh, complied. Why don't I have the citation right? Supervisor asked for the city of Fort Lauderdale. Can we recall this case? Because I want to look at the verbiage to make sure we specify what type of tree it was that was removed without the permit. So can we please recall this case? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We're going to recall your case. So just give us a few minutes. We're sorry. Okay. There were two cases. So I'll hold both of those cases and go to the next person. I have a receipt no. of a... The first has, case payment. The next case has nothing to do with the tree. Okay, sir, we're going to recall your case, so give us a few minutes. Oh. Our next case, page 36. Inspector John Claude Noel. Case number CE2310526, case address 1332 Northeast 2nd Avenue, owner Deborah L. Burke, posted at property 31624, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. Good morning, everyone. Inspector Jean Claude Noel with the City of Fort Lauderdale, presenting case CE 2310526, address 1332 Northeast 2nd Avenue. I inspected this property on October 21st, 2023. It was cited for the following violations 18 12 complied, violation 9 305 Bravo. The landscape of this property is not being maintained, a neat and well kept appearance. There are areas of dead and missing ground cover to include the swale. Violation 9-304B, the gravel driveway is not being maintained. There is missing gravel and weeds are growing through, going through it. Violation 9-306, the exterior building walls have not been maintained. Structural parts including fascia, soffits, 
are in disrepair. There are areas of the exterior that has stains and missing peeling paint to include, but not limited to the front porch walkway. Violation 9-280H1 complied. In violation 18-1, there's outdoor storage in the carport of items including, but not limited to boxes and other um, various other items at this property. This is creating a public mm -hmm. nuisance and is being maintained in such a manner that the property or may be reasonable to become infest, infestated, excuse me, infested, infested or inhabited by rodents, vermin, or wild animals, or may furnish breathing, a breathing place for mosquitoes or their, um, or threatens or endangers the public health safety of the welfare and may adversely affect and impair the economic welfare adjacent to the adjacent properties. An inspection report was posted on the property on October 21st, 2023, and a copy was mailed to the owner listed on BCPA via first class mail. Reinspection on March 27, 2023. We posted special magistrate on January 16th, 2024. A pre pre-hearing inspection was conducted on the property on March 27th. Found the violations that are not complied are 9-305B, 9-304B, 9-306B, and 18-1. I would like to submit my case file and photos for the court. The city is requesting 28 days to comply or a fine of $50 per day per violations thereafter. Okay, please state your name for the record. Deborah Burke. Okay, Ms. Burke, so the city is seeking that you get into compliance within 28 days, which is April 25th, 2024, or there'll be a fine of $50 a day per violation, okay? Is there any way to get a little longer? I'm just trying to get all the money together for. Well, I, I need you to remove, there's certain things you need to remove right away and, and especially like the landscaping, it needs to be maintained, okay? Um, that, I, I, it needs to be 28 days, it needs to be maintained. Okay. Okay, so that would be uh, April 25th. Okay. The gravel and the driveway is not being maintained. There's missing gravel and weeds. How much time do you need to get gravel? Oh, I was hoping for 60. Okay, I'll give you May 30th. Okay. Is, 63 days for the gravel, okay. or $50 a day. Uh, the exterior building walls have not been maintained. Structural parts, including the fascia and soffits, are in disrepair. Do you need the 63 days for that as well? Yeah, I, okay. Okay. I thought I, a lot of that had been resolved. Okay, but. I'll give you till May 30th as well on that one. Okay. Um, and I need you to comply as far as 18-1. There's an outdoor storage in the carport. That needs to be removed, okay? I need the whole outdoor stuff removed in yeah. 28 days. That I'm going to uh, honor the city's okay. request for 28 days or $50 a day. Okay, and then I'm doing an order to reappear on April 28th. April 28th? Yes. I mean, April 25th. I'm sorry. April 25th, an order to reappear. She's reappearing. Um, she's reappearing on the April agenda. Yes. 25th. Okay. April twenty fifth. Okay. Good luck to you. We will see you here on April twenty fifth. Okay. Thank you. Our next case, page forty. Are we ready? Okay, we're gonna go back to, we're gonna go back to page 47. Yes, we're gonna present page, page 47 first and then you can go to the new the business other, because okay. those are two separate cases that have not, yes. not for the same thing. No, okay, so you can present 48 first. Oh. Next case, page 47. Why? No, this is on um, fire. What, what page? Oh, 48, I'm sorry. 48. Next page, sorry. page 48. Yeah, what are you talking about? Good morning. Inspector, let me, I have to read it again. Yeah. Inspector Janie Thaluzma, case number CE2401-0375, case I'm address 4008 Northeast 21st Avenue, owner Racine Karasing and David Ocon, 
This case was cited 111.24 to comply by 111.24. One section not complied at $450. $450 accrued. The city is requesting the full amount. Appeal deadline 126.24. No appeal was received. Supervisor Bass, um, on behalf of Inspector Janet Deluzma for case number CE2401037. Um, property located at 4008 Northeast 21st Avenue. This case was first cited on 1-11-2024, wherein a citation was issued that was irreparable, irreversible for three live oak trees, trees being removed without first obtaining the permit. The property owner has now submitted the permits he needs for the after the fact. However, we're still asking for the imposition of $450 for the three live oaks that was removed because it's irreparable, irreversible. So it's, um, we're asking for the fine to be imposed of $450, $450 per tree that was removed. One tree. Well, that that right. fine was paid already, the 450. The $450 has been paid? Yeah. So when did you submit it to? I have the receipt here. He can show you. It's in the system? Okay, the, then it's moved. Yeah, so if he's paid the, the $450, then the case, that case is complied. And we can move on to the new business case. Thank you. Okay, then you don't have to pay it again. <laughs> You're done. Uh, there, there was oh, another, you have another case? Oh, okay. another case. His next case is on page nine. Inspector Janie Thaluzma, case number CE2401-0375, case address 4008 Northeast 21st Avenue. Owner, Racine Karasing and David Ocon, posted at property 31324, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. Good morning, Inspector Janie Thaluzma with the City of Fort Lauderdale, presenting case number CE2401-3375, property address 4008 Northeast 21st Avenue. This property was initially inspected by Inspector David Sandiford on January 11, 2024, and the following violations were observed and cited. Uh, section 9-304B is in compliance. Violation 9-305B is not complied. The landscape at this property is not being maintained in a neat and well-kept appearance. There are areas of dead and missing ground cover. Uh, violation 18-1 is not in compliance. There is an accumulation of trash and debris at this property that is creating a public nuisance. It is being maintained in such a manner that the property is or may re reasonably become infested or inhabited by rodents, vermin, or wild animals, or may furnish a breeding place for mosquitoes, or threatens or endangers the public health, safety, and welfare, or may adversely affect and impair the economic welfare of the adjacent properties. A pre-hearing is a pre-hearing inspection was conducted on March 23rd, and the following violation still remains as depicted in the photos. At this time, the city is requesting uh, to comply or a fine of $100 per day uh, per violation thereafter to be imposed. Uh, we're giving 10 days for violation 18-1 and 30 days for violation 9-305B. Um, my name is David O'Connor. I'm one of the property managers there. So as you can see, the, the two pallets that are there are sealed soil bags and marble chip bags that are being used to rectify the other violation, which is to put um, topsoil and um, landscape features on the property. This property was bought as a distressed property. It's 52 years old, completely in original condition. It's in fact listed on the property records as an excluded sale. All the sprinkler lines are broken on the property. They haven't worked in 30 years. It needs irrigation on the entire property. All that takes time. Um, but you see the two pallets, everything is sealed. There's when was no the property purchased, sir? Um, the property was purchased on seven last year on seven uh, July six. I gave was an 82 year old owner. I gave him four months free rent post occupancy because he was an 82 year old man. He couldn't really remove the belongings from the house. He okay. needed the proceeds of the house to downgrade. So I didn't even obtain possession to, to be able to do anything till the end of the year. 
Okay, so the city's um, seeking 28 days for you to get the landscaping, to maintain the landscaping. Is that some? Um, I, I think I could do it within those within those 28 days, but just in case if, if it could be extended a little longer, just so I can get it's extensive irrigation that has to be done. There's existing broken, broken sprinkler lines that have to be removed. New ones have to be installed. I'm not sure if I need to get permits for that. That's something I got asked the landscaping department. Um, I don't know if that, that'll take time as well. If there is permits that need to be done. I'll have the city address that. And as far as the accumulation of trash, that trash should so be. There, there's, there's no trash on the property. As you can see, it's just two, two pallets with, with sealed topsoil bags that came from Home Depot and marble rock bags. Um, okay. well, I, I planted about 100 clusia hedges, as you can see there. That's the only two, um, I wouldn't call that a public nuisance to say. I mean, that, that's being used to rectify the other issue. I mean, okay. if you want me to hand carry the bags and put them in the back of the property, I can do that. Um, okay, I'll let the, the city address that then. Yeah, if you, if you can move like we spoke um, yesterday, I think we did, um, if you can move those pallets of um, whatever that is, if it's sod or mulch, if you can place them somewhere not in the uh, street view, um, then that would come into compliance because it is outdoor storage. Okay. However, um, for the grass, we can't give you no more than um, the, the, the t how many days did I say for the grass? 28 days. 28 days, okay. Okay, so you guys are in agreement to extending it? Yeah. Or, or not? Yes. For the, for the time that I've given them, yeah. You, want you said 10 days for the for, no. the more than 28 days. Mm -hmm. For the, for the. So, so 10 days to move the. Okay, the, so, the I, yeah, so you have 10 days, which is April 7th, to remove the, tra you know, the, all of that that you see to the back of the yard. Okay. Um, uh, that's April 7th, and you have 28, 28 days, which is oh, April nice. 25th, to get the, the lawn, um, April 25th, to get the lawn in, in a well-kept appearance, okay? Okay. $100 a day for each one. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Luck. Our next case, page 40. Inspector Leonard Champagne, case number CE2312036, case address 208 Northeast 16th Court, owner Alan Davenport, posted at property 31124, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. Good morning. Leonard Champagne for the City of Fort Lauderdale for KCE 2312136208 Northeast 16th Court, Court for violation 15282D1A. There are three violations of the city ordinance which constitutes a request for 180 day suspension of the vacation rental certificate per case CE 23120065, which was cited. Uh, uh, for noise parking and occupancy. There was a hearing on that on 213.24 where the, uh, the uh, $600 was imposed for $200 per each violation. The city is just today uh, requesting a 180 day suspension. Right, of the rental Correct. certificate? Okay. Correct, right. All right, this is your opportunity to respond. Hi, Alan Davenport, uh, property manager and owner. Um, I was wondering if I could get a reinspection of the property to avoid the 100, 180 day suspension. Um, and I was also wondering if there was any photos of the parking violation and the noise that was, was that part of the complaint? <laughs> like two of the complaints were the parking and the noise? Sorry, can hear you. Right, so, um, and for the record, Your, um, Your Honor, Rhonda Montoya Hassan with the City Attorney's Office. Um, as the inspector stated, the case um, under which we're seeking the suspension was already heard in February, and the appeal time to appeal any of those citations, um, or that citation, and any of its components has also run. So it's a final order, and that's why we're seeking the um, 
imposition under the ordinance for the 180 day suspension. Right. At, at this point, you can't really appeal yeah, the right. violations. They've been done already. So I'm going to grant the suspension. But what day are you guys seeking for it to start? Do you have any current bookings, sir? Uh, could we start May 1st? Uh, if they, do you have a current booking? Yes. Um, so if we check, okay, for the booking, okay. Okay, I have, okay, so did you want to add something? I do. Uh, again, Katrina Johnson, Code Compliance Manager for the City of Fort Lauderdale. Um, I would pose maybe a 15 day, 15 days from today, only because we do not want to extend the suspension so far mm -hmm. out. Um, based upon unfortunately previous incidents where we've extended an extension for a long period of time, there are still being violations happening in that extended period of time. So we want to shorten the, the time that we give before a suspension starts because we continue to see violations happening while we're waiting for a suspension to start historically. Okay. When do your, you said you have um, reservations. When do May 1st, I'm going to move back into the property myself and it's not going to be a rental. So I just wanted to fulfill my April bookings, which so, I. So you don't have bookings right now then? Yeah, I do right now. And when do the bookings end? Um, they leave, I have to check my phone. I'm pretty sure April 1st. Okay. And then another, I have another booking at April 2nd. Okay, well, when does that one end? I mean, you can check your phone now if you want okay, to. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Your Honor, we're, we're asking for if he has a booking now, not if he has three or four till then. He can cancel it then. I understand, yeah. Yes. The next booking is the 2nd through the 7th. Okay, so then I'm going to make it effective April 8th then. Okay. Okay. And getting in touch with you to get it back in compliance after the 180 days? I'm, I'm sorry, you're saying once you have your suspension? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so if you get another suspension in, after that, we go 365 days. Oh, you're asking the date? No, he's not asking. I'm he's sorry. Asking I'm basically asking next year, if I, so will, if I if I may. Go ahead. Our, your renewal season starts in April, and the renewal certificate uh, application has to be done by August. You can still do your renewal and all of that. So once the suspension is over, it, we don't have to come back here and for you, us to tell you that the suspension is over. You will have an end date. Okay. And as long as you have renewed by that end date, then you can start back operating at that time. Okay. And there's just, sorry, I just, I expected photos of the parking and photos are. That happened in February. The, sure. Oh, okay. Want, the, oh, the case happened in February. Yes. Okay. That's and what so those photos were Now shown. it doesn't have to be presented. I got you. Yes. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So, okay. That's going to answer his questions for me. Our next case, page nine, Inspector Janie Deluzma. Case number CE2311190, case address 6801 Northwest 26 Terrace, owner Juan Rodolfo Ponce de Leon, posted at property 3224, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. Good afternoon, Inspector uh, Janie Thulsma with the City of Fort Lauderdale, presenting case number CE2311190, property address 6801 Northwest 26 Terrace. This property was initially inspected on November 9th, 2023, and the following violations were observed. Violation 9-304B, which is not in compliance. There are vehicles parked on the grass lawn in the front of the property. This is a recurrent violation of previous case number CE2208-0648. This case is being presented to the special magistrate to obtain a finding of fact whether compliance is met prior to the hearing or not. Violations 9-305B is not in compliance and the landscape at this property is not being maintained in a neat and well-kept appearance. There are areas of dead and missing ground cover in front of the property and the swell area. This is also a recurring violation of previous case number CE2208-0648 and this case is being presented to the special magistrate uh, to obtain a finding of fact whether, whether the compliance is met prior to this hearing or not. A pre-hearing inspection was conducted on March 23rd, 2024, and the following violation still remains as depicted in the photos. At this time, the city is requesting to comply or a fine of $100 per day per violation thereafter to be imposed. And what we're asking for uh, 10 days on violation 9-304B and 28 days for violation 9-305B. Good morning. Please state your name. Juan Ponce de Leon. 
Okay. Do you understand the violations? Yeah. Um, I have some pictures now. Most of those cars are gone. Uh, okay. So what yeah. the city is saying is that yeah. it's, it's a recurring violation. Yeah. Like, no, it's not going to so, be like that anymore. Um, I'm going to give the compliance saying to the city request it, but you need to maintain it because if you're not going to maintain it, it's going to escalate. Of course. Okay. So um, you're going to have for the violation 9-304B, you have 10 days to get into com compliance, which is April 7th, 2024, or it'll be a fine of $100 a day. And for violation 9-305B, you'll have 28 days to get into compliance, which is April 25th, 2024, or you'll have $100 a day as well. No okay. Okay. Just, you got to stay on top of it. Yep. Okay. All right. Good luck. Thank I'll you. fix it. Thank okay. you. Our next case, page seven. Inspector Janie Thaluzma, case number CE2309-0557, case address 4701 Northeast 21st Avenue, numbers one through five, owner 4701 Northeast 21st Avenue, LLC, posted at property 31324, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Officer Thaluzma with the City of Fort Lauderdale presenting case number CE2309-0557, property address 4701 Northeast 21st Avenue, 1 through 5. This property was initially inspected by Inspector David Sandiford on September 22nd, 2023, and the following violations were observed. Violation 18-12A, not in compliance, there is overgrowth, trash, rubbish, and debris on the property and or its swell. Violations 9-308B, not in compliance. There is debris, trash, or another element which is not permanent on the roof. The roof is not maintained in a clean condition. Violations 9-305A, it's not in compliance. There's growth of landscape material along the west side of the property in the alleyway encroaching upon the public right-of-way. And the landscape material is, obst is obstructing the stop sign from the alleyway on to Northeast 48th Street. Violations 47-20.20H is not in compliance. The parking facilities are not being properly maintained and may create a hazard or nuisance. There are two wheel stops that are broken and have exposed iron rods. And violations 9-280H1 is not in compliance. That fence at the property is in disrepair and is not being maintained as required. A pre-hearing uh, inspection was conducted on March 23rd, 2024 and the following violation still remains as depicted in the photos. At this time, the city is requesting for violations 18-12A, 10 days, or $200 per day, um, per, per day thereafter. Uh, violations 9-308B, we're requesting 28 days, or $200 per day thereafter. Uh, for violations 9-305A, we're asking for 10 days, and uh, $200 per day per after, um, thereafter, sorry. And violations 47-20.20H, also 28 days or $200 per day thereafter. And violations 9-280H1, uh, 28 days as well or $200 per day thereafter. Okay, please say your name for the record. Brian Bauer. You may want to turn the mic on. Brian Bauer? Okay. Hello. So I just, uh, I asked for a 30 day extension on that uh, because uh, a new inspector took over and I don't have the correct contact information for the inspector that's currently handling this case. Okay. So as you see, the city's at seeking a different number of days per violation, I guess, depending on, you know, the severity of the violation. So for the, the overgrowth trash and rubbish, they're going to give you 10 days. Okay. I, that shouldn't be a problem to remove. Not, not, not at all, but it's, if you saw the property, it's a very lush tropical property, and it would be a shame to have to cut that down like that. That I understand okay. on the side there. I've already cut down the, the shrubs that are um, imposing themselves on the stop sign, and you're welcome to drive by any time. Well, I'm going to have you go to obviously the property meet with the inspector. She'll explain to you specifically what each thing needs to be done, but you know that it can't go onto the public property. You know it may look pretty, but unfortunately, it's not. It's yeah, that's not even what I was talking about. That I that I can trim. That's fine. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to order all of the um, the compliance dates and fines that the city has requested, which will be 10 days for the first violation, April 7th, or $200 a day fine. 
Um, for 9308B, it'll be April 25th, which was $200 a day as well. 9-305A, which April 7, 2024, which is 10 days, which is $200 as well. And uh, I respectfully ask for an extension. I can't control the rain and if the landscapers can come. And if it rains for the next 10 days, then I'll be in violation at $200 a day, which is, seems, ex seems a little extreme. The supervisor asked for the city of Fort Lauderdale. Um, so the city is going to stand on 10 days for 1812A because th that is not like a, a difficult task to like just the trim um, overgrowth. Um, so we can't be contingent on the fact that thinking it's going to rain for the next 10 days because we can't predict the weather. So we still stick with 10 days for 1812A and 28 days for the remaining violation. I respectfully ask for an extension because I cannot control the landscapers and I'm not doing the work myself. I have health conditions, so respectfully, I ask for 30 days. Shouldn't matter. I don't control someone's business. I, I can't control them, whether they can come or not. They came out uh, and, and cut the shrubs so that the stop sign was not uh, being covered. And again, I didn't receive this um, notice of violation until last week. It was posted on the building and it was picked up by my landscaper and, and handed to me. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have, okay, so I'm going to have you give the inspector your phone number okay. so that you don't have that delay in getting a violation, because, right? So I have no problem giving you additional time, okay? So I'm going to give you the 28 days for the overgrowth, um, but I need you to get rid of the trash and the rubbish, okay? That's been done already. That was, that's been done for about a month. Just for clarity, Magistrate, 1812A and 9-305A are two separate violations. So the one that he's referring to is he's referencing for the encroachment onto the public right-of-way. We gave 28 days for that. The, the other 1812A is a totally different violation. I understand, but as I, I'd like to explain that my registered agent either passed away or retired, and the notice that I received on the building was given to me by my <laughs> landscaper. <laughs> Understood, sitting. and the magistrate has has ruled, and um, I, I'm not going to overrule what the magistrate ruled. So she's ruled 28 days. So yeah, no, 28 days. I'll have I'm giving you done. I'm giving you 28 days for every violation, yeah, but the fines are going to be the same, they're 200 dollars a day. But it seems like you just need to get a really good landscaper, and I did, and give the phone number to the inspector so that and the, you can meet with them, make sure it's being maintained, and you won't have this delay in getting right. the violation. Just so the court understands, I've reached out to the past inspector. Okay. The phone number is disconnected, the emails are disconnected, and this is the first time I've had the pleasure of meeting the new inspector, so it's not as though I wasn't trying to, uh, I mean, this property is beautiful. I mean, it really is. I have one question, though, but I can speak with you in person. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, then good luck to you then. Thanks. Our next case, page 52. Inspector Janie Deluzma, case number CE2303547, case address 2218 Northeast 17th Court, owner Raymond Castillo and Karen Castillo, posted at proper, I'm sorry, first heard 92823 to comply by 113023, one suspension from 113023 to 22924, two sections not complied at $100 per day, $5,600 accrued, and the fines continue to accrue. This is in order to reappear. Supervisor Bass for the City of Fort Lauderdale present case CE 23030547. The property located at 2218 Northeast 17th Court. Property was first heard on 92823 to comply by 1130 2023. We've had um, the property has had two suspensions from 1130 2023 to um, one, sorry, was suspended from 1130 2023 to 22924 with an order to reappear for two sections not in compliance. Mm -hmm. At this time, um, I've spoke with uh, the property uh, managers and understand that they're having um, some difficulties obtaining the permit uh, because of um, a hold up with the Corps of Engineers, which is required to go through that permit process first before um, getting a, a permit for the city of Fort Lauderdale for any type of seawall um, repairs. I have, um, the city is gonna be requesting 63 day stay of fines and in order to reappear because the property owner does have um, understand that we're going to ask for um, expedited um, compliance on this because we don't want this to go into next king tax season, wherein it's going to affect neighboring properties or the city um, right of way if we have tidal waters flowing through that seawall that's in disrepair. 
So again, that's 63 days to stay up fine and in order to reappear. Okay. Please state your name. Uh, Mark Costello of the Costello Law Firm on behalf of the uh, property owners. Okay. Are you guys in agreement with the city's um, recommendation? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. So there will be a stay of fine for the new date of May 30, 2024 and notice to reappear on May 30, 2024. If you just bear with me, Your Honor, I might have another hearing that day. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll follow up with the court. My phone just died, so I can't tell. But if, it, if I do, is it okay if I follow up with the court to get another hearing? He, he can appear with... Huh? Request it online. Yes, it would be via email. Okay, not a problem. Consider another yeah. email, but I, I do want to be adamant on the fact that we're asking for the 63 days because of the fact that this case has been open for over a year and we're going into next king tide season. So I don't want the hearings to be pushed way off to other hearings, grant an additional time, and then we don't have any compliance in it. So, um, totally understand. So. I'll, I'll find out today if, if I'm available or not. And if I don't send an email, then we'll be over here on May 31st. Is it at 9 30. May 30th. Oh, May 30th. Sorry. At, at 9 a.m., 9 30 a.m., what time? Nine, nine, 9 5. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's the end of our respondents. We'll take a five minute break.
Jerry, you ready? Angela, you can leave here. You can stand right there. Bo, you can come up. We do have one last respondent, page 46. Inspector Bovary Exantis, case number CE2303-1029, case address 1212 Northwest 15th Street, owner Angelo Fantasy. This case was first heard 831-23 to comply by 1026-23, one suspension from 11-30-23 to 328-24. One section not complied at $50 per day, $1,800 accrued. The city is requesting the full amount and the fines continue to accrue. Good morning, Your Honor. Uh, this is Officer Exensis on behalf of City of Atlanta, Community Enhancement. Case and address as read by the clerk. This is a uh, hearing to impose fine. The city will request at this time for all fines to um, be imposed as the property remain in violation. Okay. Please state your name for the record. Angelo Finesi. Okay. So you have a fine that is continuing to run at $50 a day. It's been running for 36 days. So you have an outstanding fine of $1,800. The city is requesting that the fine continues uh, $50 a day. What's going on with your property? Well, the property, um, it was totally um, um, fire damage. So we're working on it now, and um, we, um, we're almost done. But the problem is right now we're just waiting for the flow plans. take a while. So I spoke to um, the engineer um, yesterday. So it was some comments, you just gotta fix and go back to the um, uh, city and get the um, permit for the, um, um, for, the um, uh, for, some, for some work. And then we're working on it by nine, by two, or nine, uh, by two to three months will be, will be completely done. So you need additional time to comply? I just need additional. Nine, You're doing an, a complete interior? Months. You're doing a complete interior renovation? Well, we're gonna complete the whole house. It's just like the house will be brand new again. Supervisor Bass for the city of Fort Lauderdale. So the, 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 the remaining violation is just for the exterior and we understand that it was a fire. So the city is not opposed to a 91 day stay of fines. Um, and um, if just the 91 day stay of fines. We don't wanna order to reappear because he's confident that he'll have the exterior um, completed within the 91 days. Okay, I'm going to grant this day of fines. A new compliance have June 27th, um, or there'll be a fine of fifty dollars a day. We'll start again. Okay. June 21st. Yeah, I'll be June, finished. June 27th. Right oh yeah. Okay. I'll good luck wait. to you, sir. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. You're finished. So good. I can leave. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining our show, sir. We're going to start with our non-respondents. Page two, Inspector Robert Kasarowicz, case number FC 24010004, case address 820 Southwest 29th Street, owner Stephen Scott, posted at property 31224, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. Marshal's office here for case number FC 24010006. Property address 101 Southeast 26th Street. Mm -hmm. Property was cited in reference to municipal order section 9 313. Kasara, which we're on uh, 820 Southwest 29th Street. Oh, my mistake. Thank you very much. You're welcome. All right. Uh, Captain Robert Kasara, which for Fort Lauderdale Fire Marshal's Office for case FC 24010004. Property address 820 Southwest 29th Street. Property was cited in reference to NFPA 1, 13.6.4.3.2.1. The fire extinguishers have not been serviced or tagged by a certified person or company within the past 12 months. We're requesting 28 days or $100 a day thereafter. All right, so ordered. Please make sure and put in the orders when they don't appear. It's a no-show today. Next case, also page two, Inspector Robert Kasarowicz, case number FC 24010006, case address 101 Southeast 26th Street, owner 101 
1105 Southeast 26th Street, LLC, posted at property 31224, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. And Robert Kassar, which for Fort Lauderdale Fire Marshal's Office, case FC 2401-0006, property address 101 Southeast 26th Street, property aside in reference to municipal order section 9-313, that is complied. Also cited for NFPA 1, 1.7.7.2, there's storage in the electric meter room. That violation still exists. I have had contact with the property owner on it. We're requesting 28 days or $100 a day thereafter. Okay. Captain, so do you think it'll really take 28 days for them to remove storage? Probably not, but I'm gonna, have an, I'm gonna have an absence uh, myself, so that'll give me time oh. to get back. Okay. Okay, so what are... Next case, page three, Inspector Robert Kasarowicz, case number FC 24010007, case address 105 Southeast 26th Street, owners 101-105 Southeast 26th Street, LLC, posted at property 31224, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. And Captain Robert Kasarowicz, Fort Lauderdale Fire Marshal's Office for case FC 24010007, property address 105 Southeast 26th Street, this is the uh, mirror half of the uh, previous case, and the, the violations cited on that property from their annual inspection on 11 16 of 2023 were NFPA 1 14.4.1, the path of egress is obstructed or blocked, and NFPA 1 1.7.7.2, their storage in the electric meter room. We're also requesting 28 days or $100 a day thereafter. Per, per each violation, right? For each violation? There's two violations. For each violation. Okay, so Per violation. Okay, so ordered. Next case, page four, Inspector Robert Kasarowicz, case number FC 2401-0023, case address 1044 Northeast 8th Avenue, owner Simon FLL LLC, posted at property 31324, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. Captain Robert Kassarowicz, Fort Lauderdale Fire Marshal's Office for case FC 2401-0023. Property address 1044 Northeast 8th Avenue. Property aside in reference to NFPA 1, 13.6.4.3.2.1. The fire extinguishers have not been serviced or tagged by a certified person or company within the past 12 months. We're requesting 28 days or $100 a day thereafter. Okay, so ordered. Next case, page six, Inspector Marco Aguilera, case number CE2401-0533, case address 1236 Southwest 24th Avenue, owner Alex Stanley Rodriguez Flores and Miriam Del Vasquez Segura, posted at property 3724, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. That case was closed. This case, this case is closed. Okay, thank you. Next case, also page six, Inspector Marco Aguilera, case number CE2312-0125, case address 901 Cordova Road, owner Matthew and Catherine A.B. Friedman, posted at property 3624, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. Good morning, Marco Aguilera, City Fort Lauderdale Code Compliance Officer for case and address is read. An inspection was conducted at the property on 12523 and the following violation was observed. 47-21.5, there is no right-of-way landscape permit on file with the City of Fort Lauderdale as required per the resolution adopted by the City Commission. Uh, as per the resolution adopted, that allows the property owner to install a dock at the City Seawall for private use. The property owner shall be responsible for maintaining and beautifying the area in and around the dock and public swale area. Uh, failure to do so shall be grounds for revocation of the dock permit. Section Earlier reads, the permit holder shall be responsible for maintaining improvements and landscaping within the dock area and public swale area. The dock area and public swale area shall be landscaped in accordance with the landscape plan approved by the Department of Sustainable Development, a copy of which is attached here to as Exhibit B. For the record, a copy of Exhibit B has been submitted uh, to the evidence and a copy of the resolution in its entirety. Um, property has applied for a permit uh, permit 2403 Permit has not been issued nor completed at this time. City is requesting the magistrate to find the violation in order 91 days to obtain and complete the right-of-way landscape permit. Failure to obtain and complete the right-of-way landscape permit within 91 days will result in this matter being brought before the City Commission for revocation of the dock permit. Okay, so you're not seeking a daily fine, you're just seeking a revocation if they're not in compliance by June 27th? Yes, ma'am. 
Okay, so ordered. Thank you. Next case, page six, Inspector Marco Aguilera, case number CE2312492, case address 1224 Southwest 24th Avenue, owner Anthony Jacob Batt, posted at property 3724, posted at 1 East Broadway 31524. This case is complied. Next case, page seven, Inspector Janie Thaluzma, case number CE2303497, case address 2530 East Oakland Park Boulevard, owner Southern Bell Tell and Tell Company, post uh, tax admin office in care of Bell South Corp, posted at property 31824, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. Good afternoon, Inspector Thaluzma with the City of Fort Bell, presenting case number CE2303497. Property address 2530 East Oakland Park Boulevard. This property was initially inspected by uh, David Sandiford on May 18, 2023, and the following violations were observed. Violations 18-12A is not complied. There's overgrowth, trash, rubbish, and debris on this property and or its swell. This is a recurring violation per cases CE2208606. CE2101200, CE2201, CE2201024, and CE2204024. This case is being presented to the special magistrate to obtain a finding of fact whether compliance is met prior to the hearing or not. Violations 47 20. Point 20H is not in compliance. There are parking facilities that are not maintained at this property. This is also a recurring violation um, per case uh, reference CE21020223. This case is being presented to special magistrate to obtain a finding of fact whether compliance is met prior to the hearing or not. And violations 47-19.4B1 is not in compliance. There is a two yard two cubic yard dumpster in the parking spaces. This is a recurring violation per cases CE2201024. This case is being presented to the special magistrate to obtain a finding of fact whether compliance is met prior to the hearing or not. A pre-hearing inspection was conducted on May, uh, March 23rd, 2024, and the following violation still remains as depicted in the photos. At this time, the city is requesting 10 days to comply or a fine of $200 per day per violation thereafter to be imposed. For each violation, you're seeking $200 and 10-day yes. compliance for each one? Yes. Okay, so ordered. Thank you. Our next case, page 10, Inspector Edward Eason, case number CE2402-0238, case address 800, Southwest 4th Court, owner Richard Daniel Smith, posted at property 3824, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. What happened to this one? You skipped the one on top of that. Yes. Yes. I'll go back to it. Oh, okay. Yeah, good afternoon. Edward Deason, City of Fort Lauderdale, Code Compliance, presenting case CE 2402-0238 for the property located at 800 Southwest 4th Court. Inspection of the property was conducted on 2-9 of 24, and the following violations were observed. 9-304B, there was a trailer parked on the lawn area. This is a recurring violation from case CE. 2209-0605. A pre-hearing inspection was conducted on 327-24 and the violation remained. The city is requesting 10 days or $50 per day thereafter until compliance is met. Okay, so ordered. $50 a day with a compliance date of April 7th. 10 days, yeah. Right. Also, page 10, um, case number CE2402037, case address 6300 Northwest 9th Avenue, owner 6300 Power Line Shopping LLC, Inspector Janie Thaluzma. This case is being rescheduled. Next case, page. Okay. Next case, page 11, Inspector Edward Eason, case number CE2309-0695. Case address 700 Southwest 4th Place, owner Scott Eric Jordan and Aaron Mary Myers, posted at property 3624, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. Good afternoon, Edward Easton, City of Fort Lauderdale, Code Compliance, presenting case CE 2309-0695 for the property located at 700 Southwest 4th Place. A waterway inspection was conducted on 
925 to 23, and the following violation was observed. 8-91C, there is a mooring structure in disrepair at the rear of the property. Uh, Pre-hearing inspection was conducted on 327 to 24, and the property remained in violation. The city is requesting 91 days or $100 per day thereafter until compliance is met. So ordered. Next case, page 11, also Inspector Edward Eason, case number CE2311 0729, case address 729 Southwest Second Corps, owner SP Florida LLC, posted at property 3224, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. Good afternoon, Edward Eason, City of Fort Lauderdale, Code Compliance, presenting case CE2311 0729 for the property located at 729 Southwest Second Court. An inspection of the property was conducted on 12 7 to 23, and the following violations was, were, was observed. 47 19 4 D 1. This zoned RML 25 multi family residential property does not have the required dumpster enclosure as required by the ULDR. A pre hearing inspection was conducted on 3 27 of 24, and the property remained in violation. The city is requesting 63 days or $150 per day thereafter until compliance is met. $150, you said? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so ordered. Next case, page 12, Inspector Paulette Del Grosso, case number CE2311-0508, case address 1033 Northeast 9th Avenue, numbers 1 through 3, owner Ayanda LLC, New Anchor LLC, posted at property 3224, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. Good afternoon, Inspector Del Grosser for the City of Fort Lauderdale. The case and address are as read. The multifamily property was initially inspected on November 22nd and cited for three violations, two of which have complied. The remaining violation is 9-305B, the landscape at this property is not being maintained in a neat and well-kept appearance. There are areas of dead and missing ground cover. The aisles along the parking lot on both sides are missing landscaping. The front areas of the building also have missing landscaping and an array of unkept potted plants, buckets, buckets, etc. created an untidy appearance. Though the owner has been in communication and made efforts to cure the violations, the landscaping is still lacking and there are exposed areas of bare ground cover as well as a lack of mulch in the beds. I spoke with the owner yesterday and we agreed to meet with his landscaper next week. Therefore, the city is requesting 28 days or $100 per day thereafter. Okay, so order. Thank you. Our next case, page 15, case number CE2401011, case address 301 West Sunrise Boulevard, owner Dakota Holdings Group, LLC. This is a stipulated agreement. It was posted at 1 East Broward on 315, 2024. Violations 47 20.20.h. The city has come into an agreement for 63 days at $100 per day. So order. Also page 15, case number CE2401-0115, case address 301 West Sunrise Boulevard, owner Dakota Holdings Group LLC, Inspector Man Manuel Garcia. This was posted at property 315-24, posted at 1 East Broward 315-24. This is also a stipulated agreement with the owner. Violation 47-19.5. Point D.5 point is complied. Violation 47-20.20H. The city has agreed to 63 days at $100 per day. And violation 9-3088A is complied. So order. Next case, page 16. It's also a stipulated agreement. Case number CE2401-0447. Case address 1016 Northwest 6th Avenue. Owner Estevez Elite Multi Services LLC, Inspector Manuel Garcia. This was posted at 1 East Broward on 315 20, 2024.
violation 47-20.20H, 63 days at $100 per day. Violation 9-304B, 63 days at $100 per day. Violation 9-306, 63 days at $100 per day. Violation 9-363, 10 days at $100 per day. All right, so ordered. Next case, page 17, case number CE2401044, case address 1018, Northwest 6th Avenue, owner Prama Pramabi LLC, posted at property 31524, posted at 1 East Broward, 31524. This case is complied. Next case, page 19. Inspector Manuel Garcia, case number CE2401-0477, case address 1237 Northeast 4th Avenue, owner 1237 Church of Light, LLC, posted at property 31524, posted at 1 East Broward, 31524. Your Honor, for the record, Officer Garcia with the City of Fort Lauderdale presenting case CE2401-0477, reference the property 1237 Northeast 4th Avenue. A proactive inspection was performed at this property on January 12, 2024 and resulted in the findings of the following violations. 18-1 was withdrawn. 18-12A, there's overgrowth, trash, rubbish, and debris on the property and its swale. This is a repeat violation of case CE2305-0416 and fines will begin to accrue immediately and scheduled for magistrate hearing whether in compliance or not. 47-19.5.E.7, the chain link fence at this property was observed in disrepair. The chain link fence was observed fallen without support and portions of the screens have been ripped and are missing. This is a repeat violation of case CE2305-0416 and fines will begin to accrue immediately and scheduled for a magistrate hearing whether in compliance or not. Section 25-7 parentheses A has complied. Reinspection was performed on January 26, 2024 and found that all the violations have been complied. Uh, please refer to the photos submitted as evidence for a finding of fact. At this time, the city is requesting the imposition of fines for the following repeat violations. For section 18-12A, six days in violations in violation at $100 per day. And section 47-19.5.E.7, 12 days in violation at $100 per day bringing the total sum to $1,800. Okay, wait, let me, you're, under 18-12A, how much are you seeking? So that's six days in violation for $100 per day. So that's $600, okay. And what was the other part that you're seeking? For, for 47-19.5.E.7, mm -hmm. that one was 12 days in violation at $100 per day. Okay, $1,200. Okay, so you're seeking $1,800. Okay, so ordered. Thank you. You're welcome. Our next case, page 21, Inspector Guy Siderman, case number CE2310656, case address 816 Northwest 19th Avenue, owner Eddie Randell Estates, posted at property 31424, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. Inspector Guy Siderman for the city of Fort Lauderdale, presenting case CE2310656. Address 816 Northwest 19th Ave. I inspected the property on October 19, 2023 and cited for the following violations. Violation 1812A complied. Violation 9 TAC 305B. The landscape on this property is not being maintained in a neat and well kept appearance. There are areas of dead and missing ground cover observed. Missing ground cover on the swell and on the left side of the driveway. A pre-hearing inspection was conducted on March 27, 2024, and the violations remain depicted on the photo. The city is requesting 28 days fine of $50 a day thereafter. Okay, so ordered. Next case, also page 21, Inspector Guy Siderman, case number CE2310740, case address 720 Northwest 15 Terrace. Owner Precious Nicole Martin McBride and Samuel Lee McBride posted at property 31424, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. Inspector Guy Siderman for the City of Fort Lauderdale presenting case CE2310740, address 720 Northwest 15 Terrace. This property was inspected on October 24, 2023 by Inspector Wanda Aquavella and is cited for the following violations. Violation 47, TAC 34, 4, 
B1 complied, violation 1812A complied, violation 9, tag 305B, the landscape on the property is not being maintained and they need well kept appearance. There are areas of dead and missing ground cover. A pre-hearing inspection was conducted on March 27, 2024 and the violations remains depicted on the photo. The city is requesting 28 days or fine $50 a day thereafter. So ordered. Next case, page 22, Inspector Guy Siderman, case number CE2311-0634, case address 718 Northwest 15 Terrace. Owner Stephanie Matthew and Fernand Folks posted at property 31424, posted at Winnie Sprout with 31524. Inspector Guy Siderman, City of Fort Lauderdale, presenting case CE2311-0634, address 718 Northwest 15 Terrace. I inspected the property on November 25th, 2020. 23 and cited the following violations. Violation 9, TAC 305B complied. Violation 9, TAC 304B. There, there's a vehicle parked on the grass or lawn. A silver four-door vehicle parked on the property swelled the driveway and grass growing through the rocks. Violation 1812A complied. A pre-hearing inspection was conducted on March 27th and violations remain as a photo depicted. At the time, the city's requesting 28 days of fines of $50 day thereafter. So ordered. Next case, page 23, Inspector Guy Siderman, case number CE2312-0042, case address 2234 Northwest 7th Street, owner Peter Jones, posted at property 31424, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. Inspector Guy Siderman, City of Fort Lauderdale, presenting case CE2312-0042, address 2234 Northwest 7th Street. I inspected the property on December 2nd, 2023, and cited for the following violations. Violation 9, TAC 280H1, complied 2224. Violation 9, TAC 306, complied 2224. Violation 9, TAC 305B, complied 2224. The landscape at this property is not being maintained in a neat and well-kept appearance. There are areas of dead and missing ground cover on the swell on property. This is a recurring violation per KCE 2208-0580. This case will be presented to special magistrate seeking a finding of fact whether or not the violation complies prior to the hearing date. Violation 18, TAC 12A complied 1424. There is overgrowth, trash, rubbish, and debris on the property, and there's a swell. This is a reoccurring violation per case CE 2208-0580. This case will be presented to the special magistrate seeking a finding of fact whether or not the violation complies prior to the hearing date. The city is requesting a finding of fact that these violations existed. Okay, so ordered. Next case, page 24, Inspector Guy Seidemann, case number CE2312-0439, case address 1430 Northwest 7th Street, owner Rebecca Hernandez, posted at property 31424, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. Inspector Guy Sodom from the City of Fort Lauderdale presenting case CE2312-0439, address 1430 Northwest 7th Street. I inspected the property on December 16, 2023 and cited for the following violations. Violation 9, TAC 305B complied. Violation 9, TAC 304B withdrawn. Violations 24, TAC 27B complied. Violations 9, TAC 280H1, defense of this property is in disrepair and is not being maintained as required. It is leaning and has a disconnected part. As of March 27, 2024, the violation 9 TAC 280H1 remains as per photos shown. At this time, the city is requesting 28 days or a fine of $50 per day thereafter. So ordered. Next case, also page 24, case number CE2401044, case address 900 Northwest 17th Avenue, owner David Kadar and Shaw Kadar. Inspector Guy Seidem in this case is being rescheduled. Next case, page 25, Wait, Inspector. Are you rescheduling it? Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Next case, page 25, Inspector Guy Seidem in case number CE2308-0622, case address 637 Northwest 14th Avenue, owner Maxine Bellamy Grant and Andrea Bellamy Thomas and all others posted at property 31424 posted at 1 East Broward 31524.
Inspector Guy Satterman for the City of Fort Lauderdale presenting KCE 23080622, address 637 Northwest 14th Ave. I inspected the property on 819-2023 and cited for the following violations. Violation 47, TAC 21.9.M, section of the vacant lot has no lawn coverage as required. Violation 18, TAC 12A, complied. Violation 47, TAC 34. Point one, point a, point one. There is illegal land use occurring on the property. There are chairs, tables, large tarp, and other miscellaneous items that are being stored on this vacant lot. This is a non-permitted use in a, in a RC-15 zone property and ULDR regulations. As of March 27, 2024, violations remain as per the photos. At this time, the city is requesting 28 days or a fine of $50 per day thereafter. Thanks, the order. Per violation, correct? Correct. Okay. Next case, also page 25, Inspector John Claude Noel, case number CE2311-0455, case address 1222 Northwest 4th Avenue, owner Lisa Newbold, posted at property 31524, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. Inspector Jean-Claude Noel for the City of Fort Lauderdale presenting case CE2311045. Senior Inspector Patrice Jolly inspected this property on November 17, 2023 and cited for the following violations. Violation 9-304B complied. Violation 9280B. There, there are building parts which are not maintained. The drip um, that are not maintained, the drip edge along the roof line on the north side of the building is covered with black mildew-like substance and will, um, as well as vegetation. Violation 9-306 complied. Vi violation 24-27B complied. Inspect inspection report was posted on the property on November 17, 2023, and a copy was mailed to the owner listed on BCPA via first class. Um, it was reinspected December 29, 2023, and posted for special magistrate on March 16, 2024. A pre-hearing inspection was conducted on March 27, 2024, and found the violation of 9-280B was not complied. I would like to submit for the case file photos to the court. The city is requesting 28 days to comply or a fine of $50 per day per violation thereafter. I met with the homeowner for the first time um, today. I knocked on her door every time I went to that property, but today she did come to magistrate, talked to her for a short while. She apologized. She didn't realize she missed that part of the building. She said she'll have it taken care of within um, 28 days. Okay, so order. Next case, page 26, Inspector Patrice Jolly, Marco Aguilera presenting case number CE2312011, case address 1720 Northwest 28th Avenue, owner HD902 LLC, posted at property 3224, posted at Winnie's Broward 31524. Mark Aguilera, City of Fort Lauderdale Code Compliance Officer for case and address is read. An inspection was conducted on 12-223 and the following violations were observed. 1811A complied. 9-305B, the landscape of this property is not being maintained in a neat and well-kept appearance. There are areas of dead and missing ground cover on the swale and in the rear of the property. This is a recurring violation per case CE 2303-0523. 9-278E complied, 9-306 complied. As of 326-24, all violations cited have come into compliance. At this time, city is requesting a finding of fact for violation of 9-305B. Thank you. Next case, page 26, Inspector Marco Aguilera, case number CE2402-0054, case address 2630 Sugar Loaf Lane. Owner, Carmen Camino. Posted at property 3624, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. Marco Aguilera, City of Fort Lauderdale Code Compliance Officer for case and address is read. An inspection was conducted on 2324 and the following violations were observed. 9-304B, there are vehicles, trailers parked on the grass lawn area. This is a recurring violation per case CE 23080810. Uh, 18-4C, there is a trailer with no license plate stored on the driveway. This is also a recurring violation per case CE 23080810. 47-191D complied, 9-306 complied. As of 326-24, all violations cited have been corrected as per the photos depict. 
At this time, the city is requesting a finding of fact for violation 9 304B and 184 c So answered. Thank you. Next case, page 27, Inspector Patrice Jolly, Marco Aguilera presenting case number CE2312395, case address 1050 Northwest 6th Street, number 4, owner 1050 Northwest 6th Street, LLC, posted at property 3624, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. I believe this was closed. Oh, nope, I'm sorry, I found it. All right. Marco Aguilera, City of Fort Lauderdale Code Compliance Officer. An inspection was conducted on 12 15 23, and the following violations were observed 9 304 B complied, 9 305 B. The landscape of this property is not being maintained in a neat and well kept appearance. There are areas of dead and missing ground cover at the rear of the building. Uh, 47 34 4B1 complied, 47 19 4C2. Placement, storage of containers, receptacles, or dumpsters that service private property upon or in any street, alley, or public right-of-way is unlawful. This is a recurring violation per case CE 22020932. As of 326.24 violations for 9-305B and 47194C2 remain on the property as per photos depict. At this time, city is requesting 28 days for 9-305B and 63 days for 4719-4C2 or face fines of $150 per day per violation. Okay, so you're seeking 150 per violation and 28 days for the first violation and 63 days for the other violation. Correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so ordered. Thank you. Next case, also page 27, Inspector Bovary Xantis, case number CE2312-0684, case address 1733 Northwest 18th Street, owner 2771 LLC, Posted at property 3924, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Officer Exentis on behalf of the City of Fort Lauderdale, Community Enhancement. Case number and address as read. Um, this property was first inspected in December 27, 2023, and the following violations were observed. Violation 18-12A is complied. Violation 9-306 is complied. Violation 9-305A is withdrawn. Violation 9-305B, the landscape at this property is not being maintained in a neat and well-kept appearance. There are areas of dead and missing ground cover. Um, the city is requesting 28 days to comply or fine of $100 uh, each day thereafter. Okay, so ordered. Thank you. Next case, page 28, Inspector Jeffrey Lombard, case number CE2310377. Case address 865 Northwest 16th Avenue. Owner Nakia Ingraham. Posted at property 3624. Posted at 1 East Broward 31524. Good afternoon. I'm Jeff Lombard with representing the city of Fort Lauderdale. CE number 23100377. Address 865 Northwest 16th Avenue. Uh, this is a pro proactive um, inspection that was conducted on 10-12-2023. The following violations were cited. Violation 9-306 exterior wall um, has been complied. Also, this is a reoccurring case. Uh, this is a recurring violation case number CE2009059. This case will be presented to a special magistration seeking a finding of fact whether or not it's in violation complies or the hearing date. Violation 9-363, uh, landlord registration has complied. Violation 24-27, um, containers left at the front property, not pulled back of the approved location has complied. Violation um, that excuse me. Violation 18-12A <coughs> complied overgrowth trash and debris on the property. Violation 9305B gravel rocks and gravel on the swell are not being maintained neatly in a special neat appearance uh, has complied. Also, this is a recurrent violation. Case number CE 20090509. Case, this case will be presented to a special magistration seeking a finding of fact 
whether or not if it complies or prior of the hearing date. Um, a reinspection was conducted on 11-17. All, all violation has complied. This is the end of my testimony. Both violations. Okay. Right, Excuse so me. Order. Sorry, uh, Supervisor Brown. Just for the record, um, he just didn't read in for 1812A. That one is also a recurring violation of case uh, CE 290509. So it's a finding of fact for those three violations. Correct. Excuse me. Yes. Okay, so ordered. Next case, page 29. Case number CE 23110609. Case address 630 Northwest 14th Way. Owner Lillian Davis, Inspector Jeffrey Lombard. This is a stipulated agreement and it was posted at 1 East Broward on 315 2024. Violation 9-306. They uh, inspector agreed with the neighbor for 28 days or $100 per day. Violation 9-305B, 28 days or $100 per day. Violation 9-313A, 28 days or $100 per day. 18-12A, 28 days or $100 per day. Okay, so ordered. Next case, page 30. Inspector Jeffrey Lombard, case number CE 23120036, case address 625 Northwest 22nd Road. Owner, Shalonda Copeland and Margie Francis. Posted at property 3824. Posted at 1 East Broward 31524. Good afternoon. I'm Jeff Lombard, representing the city of Fort Lauderdale. Case number CE 23112036. Address 625 Northwest 22 Road. A proactive inspection was conducted on 12 2 2023. The, the violation were cited. Um, violation 18-12A was withdrawn, overgrowth and trash, rubbish and debris on the property on the swell. Violation 9-305B, landscape at the property is not being maintained and they need well appearance. There is an um, area of dead missing ground covers. Violation 9-280D, withdrawn. The gravel parking, excuse me, the gravel parking area is not being occupied, not being occupied, property is not being maintained, gravel is worn out, the grass is growing through it. Violation 9-305-306, exterior building and wall fascia soffits are not being maintained, the exterior building are discolored, mildews and area are peeling, missing chip paint on the exterior building and wall and fascia. A reinspection was conducted on 01-17-2023, revealing the property still remained in violation, resulting the case to be scheduled for a special magistrate hearing. A, re um, a pre-hearing inspection was conducted on March 22, 2024. Property still remained in violation. I have no communication with the owner throughout this process. Today, the city is requesting a 28 days to comply or a fine of $100 per day Therefore, each violation. All photos have been submitted as record for evidence. Okay, so order. Our next case, page 32, Inspector Jeffrey Lombard, case number CE 23120528, case address 728 Northwest 20th Avenue, owner Rodney B. Davis and Claude R. Hanlon, Posted at property 3624, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. Good afternoon. Inspector Jeff Lombard with the city of Fort Lauderdale represent case number CE 23120528, address 728 Northwest 20th Avenue. A proactive, a proactive inspection was conducted on 1220-2023 following the following violation were cited. Violation 9-280H1, fence at this property in disrepair, not being maintained as required. A chain length fence, the chain length fence is in disrepair. A section of this fence is being bent and rusted on the post. Metal objects is used to regular posts. The chain is missing a top bar. Violation 9 
1-800-304-B isn't complied, the, the, um, violation, I mean, violation 9-305-A, there is overgrowth and landscaping, a, a cum of approaching on the right of way has, has complied. Violation dash, I mean, excuse me, that, uh, violation 18-4B withdrawn. Um, a reinspection was conducted on 9, I mean, on 1-19-2024, revealing the property still remains in violation, resulting the case to be scheduled for a special, special magistration hearing. A pre-hearing was conducted on March 22nd, 2024. Property still remained in violation, had no communication with the owner throughout this process. Today, the city is requesting 28 days to comply or $100 fines per day. Therefore, for each violation, all photos have been submitted as record for evidence. It's, it's only one violation that's remaining, right? 9-280-H1. Correct. H1. Okay. The, the fence. Okay. So, so ordered $100 a day, April 25th compliance date. Okay. Thank Correct. you. Next case, page 33, <laughs> Inspector Gustavo Caracas, case number CE2311-0554, case address 900 South Andrews Avenue, owner Deborah P. Rochlin, LLC, posted at property 3624, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. Good afternoon, Special Magistrate. Uh, Gus Caracas for the City of Fort Lauderdale presenting case number CE2311054 for the address located at 900 South Andrews Avenue. Inspection of the property was performed on November 20, 2023. Uh, cited for the following violation, 47229, there's an unpermitted feather flag that has been erected on this property. This case is presented to you, uh, ma'am, as a recurring violation for CE2309-0776. Whether or not it comes into compliance before the Special Master hearing, Courtesy notice was mailed to the property owner listed on BCPIE at first class mail on November 20, 2023, allowing seven days to come into compliance. Contact has been made with the property owner. Special magistrate request form sent on November 28th is scheduled for today's special master. Pre-hearing inspection was done on March 25th of this year and pictures pre presented here were taken to confirm the violation has been brought into compliance. Your Honor, this is a finding of fact. Okay, so order. Thank you. Next case, also page 33. Inspector John Claude Noel, case number CE2303-0532, case address 1634 Northwest 8th Avenue, numbers one and two, owner Ben Thomas, Carolyn J. Thomas, and Anthony L. Thomas, posted at property 31424, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. Inspector John Claude Noel with the City of Fort Lauderdale presenting case that was just read. Um, the property was first inspected on March 17, 2023 and was cited for the following violations. Violation 18-12A, there is overgrowth, trash, rubbish, and debris on the property and or its swale. Violation 9-305B, the landscape at this property is not being maintained in a neat and well-kept appearance. There are areas of dead and missing ground cover. Violation 9-304B, the asphalt driveway at this property is not being maintained. The surface has cracks and damaged damage areas and it's stained with dirt and oil. Violation 4721.16.A, there's a tree stump left there. Um, that the removal of the tree stump, the tree, the tree at the resident, the tree, there was a tree there. It got removed, but the stump is still at the um, property. Violation 4734.1A.1. There's an illegal land use occurring at this RS15 zone property. There's illegal outdoor storage consisting of um, consisting of but not limited to plywood, indoor furniture, buckets, containers, and other miscellaneous items. Violation 9-20H. The chain link fence at this property is not being maintained as required. And there are sections which are damaged or missing. Violation 9-308B. There's debris and trash and other elements which are not permanent on the roof. Inspection report was posted on this property on March 17, 2023, and a copy was mailed um, to the owner listed on BCPA via first class mail. A reinspection on October 11, 23, posted for special magistrate on March 14, 2024. A pre-hearing inspection was conducted on March 27, 2024, and all the violations remain. I would like to submit the case file for photos to the court. The city is requiring 28 days to comply or a fine of $100 per violation thereafter. 
for violation 9-305, 9-305B, 9-304B, 4721.16A, 9-28H1, and 4734.1A1, Your Honor. Is 47-34.1A1 still, in, are, are all violations? They're all violations are still not so in all compliance. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Then so what are all of them will have a $100 a day fine and with a 20-day compliance date of April 25th? He says Say, again. Say that again. They're Say that again, ma'am. I'm sorry. They're, they're not in compliance. None of them are in compliance. Yes. Next case, page 34. Inspector John Claude Noel, case number CE2307. 0383 case address 1900 Northwest 9th, 9th, 9th Avenue owner Solly Properties LLC posted at property 22924 posted at 1 East Broward 31524. Inspector Jean Claude for the City of Fort Lauderdale presenting case CE 2307 address 1900 Northwest 9th Avenue. Inspector David Sanford first inspected his property on July 14, 2023 and cited for the following violations. Violation 18-12 alpha. There is overgrowth, trash, rubbish, and debris on this property and its swale. There is an old shopping cart, broken table, tire, and other miscellaneous trash on the property. Violation 4720.20H. Um, there are parking facilities that are not maintained at this property. There are holes in areas stained and broken asphalt, wheel stops, and, uh, and dirt, dirt and fading, dirty parking stripes at the, park, at the property. Violation 9-305, the landscape at this property is not being maintained in a neat and well-kept appearance. There are areas of dead and missing ground cover. Wow. Violation 9-305, um, that's been complied. Inspection report was posted on the property on July 14th, 2023. A copy was mailed to the owner listed on BCPA via first class. Reinspection was done August 16th, posted for special magistrate on February 29th, 2024. Pre-hearing inspection was conducted on March 27, 2024, and found the violations are not complied for 18-12, 9-305B, and 4720H. I would like to submit this case file for photo and the photos for court. The city is requesting 10 days to comply with the fine of 18-12 or $50 per day per violation thereafter. And the remaining violations, the city is requesting 28 days to comply or, um, comply or a fine of $100 per day per violation thereafter for 9-305B and 4720.20H. Okay, so so ordered. So 18-12A, there should be compliance by April 7th or $50 a day, and for violations 47 dash It's 100, ma'am, for everything. I thought you said 50 for the first. Oh, I'm sorry, 50, I apologize, I gave 50, for yes, but, okay, we'll do 50. Well, is that what you want? I mean, I was just listening. Let's do 100, I, I prefer 100. It's a, it's a business, they, they can afford it. Okay, so it'll be $100 a day for each of the violations. The first violation has to have compliance by 10 days which is April 7th, and then violation 47-2020 and 9-305 shall be in compliance in 28 days, which is April 25th. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Next case, page 35, Inspector John Claude Noel, case number CE2309-0031, case address 1316 Northwest 7 Terrace, owner M. Christina Board, revocable trust, Christina M board trustee posted at property 31824 posted at 1 East Broward 31524. I inspected this property. I'm sorry, Jean-Claude Noel with the city of Fort Lauderdale. I inspected this property on February 28th, 2023 and cited for the following violations. Violation 18-12A complied. Violation 18-1 complied. Violation 18-4 complied. Violation 9-306 um, complied. Um, by, violation 9-304, the concrete driveway at this property is not being maintained. The surface has cracks for damages in areas and is stained with dirt or oil. This is a reoccurring violation. Previous case number is going to be CE21120357. This case will proceed to special magistrate to obtain finding of fact whether or not it comes into compliance prior to the hearing date. All violations have been complied as of now 
and the city is um, um, asking for this to be heard for a reoccurring case and is being read for a finding under a fact. So 9-304B is now in compliance? Yes, it is. Okay, so finding a fact is entered. Yep, everything's complied. But which, which are the violations you're seeking a finding of fact? Finding of fact is going to be for 9-305B. 1812 is complied. Oh, I apologize. It is a reoccurring. I apologize. Yes, it is. Uh, let me read that over. Um, there's an overgrowth trash, rubbish, overgrowth trash, rubbish, and debris on this property. Um, and the CE number and reference for this case is going to be CE21120-2357. The case will um, proceed to special magistrate and, and to be obtained for finding under, under a fact whether or not it comes into compliance prior to the hearing. Thank you for catching that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Next case, page 36, Inspector John Claude Noel, case number CE 23110618, case address 1540 Northeast 2nd Avenue, owner Christine A. Benicasa and Constantina Benicasa, posted at property 22924, posted at Winnings Broward 31524. Inspector John Claude Noel, the city of Fort Lauderdale, case that was just read. I inspected this property on November 22nd, 2023, and cited for the following violations. Violation 18-12A complied. Violation 9-305, the landscape of this property is not being maintained in a neat and well-kept appearance. There are areas of dead and missing ground cover. Violation 9-304B, um, the concrete driveway of this property is not being maintained. The service has cracks and or damages in areas that are stained with dirt and oil. Inspection report was posted on this property on November 22, 2023, and a copy was mailed to the owner listed in DCPA via first class mail. It was reinspected on December 27, 2023, posted for special magistrate on February 29, 2024. A pre-hearing inspection was conducted on March 27 and found the violations that were not complied with 9-305B and 9-304B. Um, I would like to submit this for um, case file for photos for court. The city is requesting 28 days to comply for a fine of $50 per day per violation thereafter okay. for both violations. 9-305B and 9-304B. So ordered. Next case, page 38, Inspector John Claude Noel, case number CE2312180, case address 1501 Northwest 8th Avenue, owner Michael F. Gruber and Islam Ute, posted at property 31524 and posted at 1 East Broward 31524. This is in reference to the case that was just read. I inspected this property on December 8, 2023, cited for the following violations. Violation 18-12A, there's overgrowth trash, rubbish, and debris on this property and, it, and or its swale. Violation 9-305B, the landscape of this property is not being maintained in a neat and well-kept appearance. There are areas of dead and missing ground cover to include the swale. Violation 18-4C, complied. Violation 4720.20H, there are there are parking facilities that are not maintained at this property. The concrete asphalt surface has cracks, damages, and stains in dirt and oil. There are wheel stops which are damaged and not secure, and the striping is f faded or missing. Violation 9-306, the exterior building walls have not been maintained. Structural parts, including the fascia, soffits, and um, are in disrepair, and there are areas of the exterior that have stains and missing and peeling paint. Violation dash six seven B has been complied. Um, an inspection report was posted on this property on December eighth, and a copy was mailed to the owner listed on DCPA via first class. It was reinspected on December twenty seventh, two thousand twenty three, posted for special magistrate on March fourteenth. A pre hearing inspection was conducted on March twenty seventh and found the violations below that were not complied. Um, that would be 18-12, 4720.20, 20, 9-306, and 9-305. The city is requesting 28 days um, to comply with the fine or 100 per, do, um, per day per violation thereafter. I would like to submit my case file and the photos to the court for evidence. So there's four violations that are still existing, correct? That is correct, ma'am. Okay, then so order.
Next case, page 39, Inspector Manuel Garcia, case number CE2312088, case address 1512 Northwest 7th Avenue, owner 2016 Jordy C&M LLC, personal service on 31524, posted at 1 East Broward, 31524. For the record, Officer Garcia with the City of Fort Lauderdale presenting case CE2312088. This is in reference to the property 1512 Northwest 7th Avenue. This property was initially cited on December 5th, 2023 by Code Compliance Officer Wanda Aquavella for the following violations. 9-304B, there are vehicles and trailers parked on the grass lawn area. The driveway and approach are not properly maintained. There are areas of missing gravel and weeds going through growing through the existing gravel. This is a recurring violation that was previously cited in May of 2020 under KCE 20050292 and again in April 2021 under KCE 21040857. Due to the recurring nature of this violation, this case will be presented to the special magistrate whether the property comes into compliance before the hearing or not. This violation has complied. 9-305B, the landscape at this property is not being maintained in a neat and well-kept appearance. There are areas of dead and missing ground cover. This is a recurring violation that was previously cited in May 2020 under KCE 20050292. And again in April 2021 under KCE 21040857. Due to the recurring nature of this violation, this, cu this case will be presented to the special magistrate whether the property comes into compliance before the hearing or not. Also, this violation has complied. Section 18-4C has also complied. Reinspection was performed on March 27, 2024 and found that the property complied with all requirements issued by the city as per the photos depict. The city at this time is requesting a finding of fact for the recurring violations. So order. Thank you. Next case, page 40, Inspector Pat Gavin, case number CE2401-0012, case address 1601 Northeast 11th Avenue, owner Mor Brett S. Morgan, posted at property 31124, posted at 1 East Broward Recall that. One. Yeah, I, I need a let's, case number. No, let's skip that one. I'll come back to it. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna move to page forty one. Inspector Pat Gavin, case number C E two four zero one zero three five six. Case address two two three seven North Ocean Boulevard, numbers one through three. Owner two two three seven North Ocean Boulevard LLC. Posted at property three eleven twenty four. Posted at one East Broward three fifteen twenty four. I'm gonna come back to that one too. Okay. I think that's it. Ready? Our, uh, we're going to move to case number CE2312361, Inspector Evan Oaks, Leonard Champagne presenting. Case number CE2312361, case address 1610 Southwest 24th Avenue, owner Matthew Renee Pierre Patope. Posted at property 22924, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. Yeah, Leonard Champagne wait, for the wait, city wait, of Fort Lauderdale, case number CE 23120361, property address 1610 Southwest 24th Avenue. This property was initially inspected on December 15, 2023, and the following violation was observed 15272A. Property is being utilized as a vacation rental without the required certificate of compliance from the city. Additional inspectors were conducted, including a pre hearing inspection on Thursday, March 28, 2024, and the following violation remains. Uh, the city is requesting 15 days to come into compliance or fine of $500 per day thereafter. Okay, so ordered. Thank you. We're going to go back to page 40. 
Inspector Pat Gavin, case number CE2401-0012, case address 1601 Northeast 11th Avenue, owner Brett S. Morgan, posted at property 31124, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. Sorry about that. Pat Gavin, City of Fort Lauderdale Co. Compliance Officer, presenting case and address as read. This property was cited under case CE2003-0345 on March 9th, 2020 given 10 days to comply for the following violation. 15-272A, this property is being used as a vacation rental without the required certificate of compliance. On February 11th, 2022, the violation was complied and the case was closed. On January 9th, 2024, the property was again cited for the same violation and complied on March 18th, 2024. The violation of this property is now in compliance. However, the city is requesting a finding of fact that this is a recurring violation and any subsequent violation of this code will be cited as a repeat violation with daily fines of $500 per day for each day the violation exists. So answered. Thank you. Next case, page 41, Inspector Pat Gavin, case number CE2401-0356, case address 2237 North Ocean Boulevard, numbers one through three, owner 2237 North Ocean Boulevard, LLC, Posted at property 31124, posted at 1 East Broward 31524. Good afternoon, Pat Gavin, City of Fort Lauderdale Code Compliance Officer, presenting case and address as read. This property was cited under case CE2310784 on October 26th, 2023, and given 15 days to comply for the following violation. 15-281A, there is operation of a vacation rental with an expired certificate of compliance at this location. On December 7th, 2023, the violation was complied and the case was closed. On January 22nd, 2024, the property was again cited for the same violation. The violation at this property is still not in compliance. The city is seeking full compliance within 15 days or a fine of $500 per day thereafter. Additionally, the city is requesting a finding of fact that this is a recurring violation and any subsequent violation of this code will be cited as a repeat violation with daily fines of $500 per day for each day the violation exists. Okay, so what? Did it go dry? Did it go dry? No, they're seeking 15 days for compliance or $500 a day, and then a finding of fact that there's a repeat violation, additional $500 a day. Can you do that order? Rhonda, Amy? What? <laughs> so there's... <laughs> It's the, the case is not in compliance. We're asking for compliance within 15 days, a fine of $500 per day for not, for if they're not complied after that. Additionally, this is a recurring violation. We're asking for a finding of fact as a repeat violation and $500 per day if it recurs. So I don't think you need the last component. I mean, of, of if it reoccurs, because then the magistrate can just order that amount of the fine. That doesn't need to be a part of the order, but so I would take I, that part out. Yeah, I think it's it's a given, but because you did it in the last one too, you wanted to find yeah, it. Yeah, well, the last one was kind complied. Of, the last case that was, was complied. already in we, compliance. But this, one, since this one's not in compliance. I, I hear what she's saying. It can go either way. I, I'm good either way. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you, know. you don't really need the like the finding of facts since they're not in compliance. Right. 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 Yeah. So I would just stick with the, no, a 15-day um, compliance date with $500 a day. We, we are getting the finding of fact right now. Right. Yeah, right. I think the first part is sufficient. Yeah, I would just stick to... with the first part of the order, which would be a, a, a compliance at 15 days or $500 a day. Okay. Yes. We have to go back to page 11. The case on the top, Inspector Edward Eason, case number CE2311330, case address 517 Southwest 4th Avenue, numbers 1 and 2, owner Santiago Jaquin Chacon. Good this case was posted on 3224. 
Good afternoon, Edward Easton, City of Fort Lauderdale, Code Compliance, presenting case CE 2311-0330 for property located at 517 Southwest 4th Avenue. An inspection of the property was conducted on 1128 of 23, and the following violations were observed. 9-305A is complied, 9-304B is complied, 9-280H1 is complied. 1812A is overgrowth on the property and swale. This is a recurring violation from case CE 21110667. This violation is now complied. Uh, the city is requesting, um, only requesting a finding of fact for violation 18-12A. Okay, so what are... Oh, he called it. Our next case, page 45. Inspector Gustavo Caracas, case number CE2311199, case address 321 Northeast 3rd Street, owner Dependable Equities, LLC. This case was first heard 213.24 to comply by 223.24. One section not complied at $100 per day, $3,400 accrued. The city is requesting the full amount and the fines continue to accrue. So that's your next case. Inspector Jeffrey Lombard, case number CE2309-0377, case address 2212 Northwest 9th Court, owner Pierre Roger John Baptiste and Lamani Sam. This case was first heard 125-24 to comply by 229-24. One section complied at $50 per day, $1,350 accrued. The city is requesting the full amount. So ordered. Okay, so you want to revisit that one then? I was doing no, so he it. just has to, um, he's going to ask for a different amount. Okay. So he has to read it in. Okay. Good afternoon. I'm Jeff Lombard. I represent the city of Fort Lauderdale. This is case number CE2309-0377, property 2212 North, Northwest 9th Court. This case was first heard on... January 25th, 2024, magistrate had ruled on the city favor of the owner to come in correct to come in correct of the violation by 327. Violation is now complied. The city's requesting um, administration costs of 488. Okay, so what are Next case, Inspector Bovary Exantis, case number CE2301-0495, case address 1549, Northwest 11th Way, owner BAF Assets, LLC. This case was first heard 102623 to comply by 113023. One section not complied at $25 per day, $2,975 accrued. The city is requesting the full amount and the fines continue to accrue. So ordered. Next case, page 49, Inspector Paulette Del Grosso, case number CE2309-0452, case address 1451 North Federal Highway, owner BH Plaza Del Mar, LLC. This case was first heard 125-24 to comply by 328-24. One section not complied at $100 per day, fine start 329-24, and this was in order to reappear. Okay. So the fines will continue, I guess the fines will start as of March 29th. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, so ordered. Next case, Inspector Bernstein Sandberg, case number CE2308-0099, case address 301 Southwest 13th Avenue, owner Historic Westside School, LLC. This case was first heard 102623 to comply by 12524. One suspension from 113023 to 32824. One section not complied at $100 per day. Fines start 32924, and this was a request for extension. Okay, well, I'm going to deny the extension. Hey, well, I think oh. Burn has something. <laughs> oh, so sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, Senior Inspector Bernstein presenting case number and property address as read. The following violations remain. 9306, the exterior building walls have not been maintained. There are areas of the, of the building that have stains and discoloration. 
pre-hearing inspection was conducted on March 23, 2024. We feel the violations remains. I would like to submit the photos into the record. Um, this is a property that the city is in touch with the owner to try to obtain it. Maybe, maybe, maybe part of a buy or lease or somewhat. So the city is requesting 154 days while during that process of. Oh, okay. um, All right. So I'm going to grant the extension for August 29th. Next time I'll look up. <laughs> the city is requesting to enter pages 53 and 54 into today's hearing as an exhibit. It is the city's list of complied, closed, withdrawn, and rescheduled cases. So ordered. This concludes the special magistrate hearing agenda for Thursday, March 28th, 2024.